Welcome back. This is Map Chef episode 423, featuring a review of the game Neverwinter Nights 2. Now this is uh, one of the great uh, sort of modern classics. It's hard for me to believe this thing came out 13 years ago. Seems like yesterday. I still in my mind consider this to be a very new game. Uh, but it was put out by Obsidian, who at that point had really only done Knights of the Old Republic 2. Uh, it met with pretty good reviews, uh, but it got sort of eclipsed by its own expansion pack, uh, Mask of the Betrayer, uh, which many people consider to be one of the best uh, campaigns of all time, at least in terms of uh, CRPGs. Anyway, I think the time got kind a of long uh, overdue for a good hard look at this game, uh, Neverwinter Nights 2. In this video, I'll be looking at the original campaign, uh, talking about uh, what I like, what I dislike about it. Uh, but overall, though, I think it's a really, really brilliant, a lot of fun um, you know, I started off, I just wanted to play it for a couple hours, refresh my memory for the video. I ended up getting so absorbed, I had to uh, play all the way through the original campaign before I felt like I could uh, take time off to make this video. It's really that good. I really had a great time with it. Uh, if you want to get a copy, uh, you can go to GOG, GOG.com. It's uh, 20 bucks, basically $19.99. You get the original campaign, Mask of the Betrayer, and the uh, third expansion. I think that's uh, Storms of Zeer, something like that. If I... If my uh, memory is correct, uh, but it's really a great deal. Of course, you can always track down your uh, box copy. But anyway, got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is Neverwinter Nights 2. All right, folks, and here we go with Neverwinter Nights 2. <laughs> Man, I've been having some, uh, some real fun with this game. I, I was originally just going to play this for a few days. You know, get get sort of back into it enough, refresh the old brain cells, do a, a little review of it. But then I got so sucked in, I had to sit there and play through the entire original campaign. And just, I really fell back in love with this game. Uh, so I'm really excited about sharing it with you. Uh, but before I get started, I want to talk about a couple of uh, mods I think you should get, especially if you're trying to play this on a modern PC. Uh, one, I'll just call, I'll put the uh, links to these in the show notes for you, but one is the Neverwinter Nights 2 Client Extension. And these are both available, by the way, on uh, Nexus Mods. And I think Neverwinter Vault is where I got this first one. Uh, but I'll again, I'll post the links in the show notes. Uh, the Client Extension module is an add-on. It fixes a bunch of uh, crash bugs, uh, does something for the multiplayer. I didn't use it for that. Uh, the main reason I recommend this is that if you're, for whatever reason, when I originally tried to play the game, I downloaded the GOG version, 20 bucks, to get the original campaign and these uh, two official uh, expansions. Uh, the problem was the animation was terrible. A lot of uh, stuttering animation. It was slow. It was cumbersome. <laughs> it was you know, really just unplayable uh, on a modern system, at least my system. I downloaded this client extension, Boom, suddenly the animation buttery smooth. So I recommend that if you're having any kind of uh, animation issues, frame rate issues. Uh, the other one I'll recommend is the TCHOS, T-C-H-O-S, HD widescreen, UI menu, and loading screen. And basically that just makes it so that the little uh, dialog boxes, <laughs> the dialog, which is kind of key in this game, uh, various windows and things, will be big enough where you can make it out at high resolution because of course this game was not built uh, for today's <laughs> incredible uh, you know 4k resolutions or even uh, 1080 resolutions I think the original was back in the old four three days uh, so you're really going to like those mods if you're playing it on a modern system uh, and then just uh, one other thing I, I don't want to talk a lot about the development of the game because I want to do that throughout the video uh, but this original did come out back in 2006 it's by Obsidian a lot of the guys that worked on this game I've had on my show. I've interviewed them, uh, some of them a couple of times. Uh, Chris Avalon, of course, worked on this, as did Josh Sawyer. Uh, Fergus Urquhart was the president of the company. He had a lot of input uh, in, input into this game. And also, it's, it's kind of cool, I think, to think that this was really, I think, Obsidian Studios' uh, only really second big project. They had done Knights of the Old Republic 2 before this. Uh, but they had a reputation forming at that time of uh, working on sequels. 
kind of being the go-to studio when a company like BioWare didn't want to make their own uh, sequel or expansion. They would sort of basically outsource it to these uh, Obsidian, of course, a lot of uh, Black Isle studio uh, veterans formed that company. Uh, so I guess, you know, some people like uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2 better than the first one even. I saw some of that. I was kind of curious what the uh, modern consensus was on those two games. Uh, it's kind of divided. I think probably safe to say more. Most people probably prefer the first Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, when you get into Neverwinter Nights 1 versus 2, though, that's, that's where it really gets interesting. Uh, you know, who knows? I'd like to hear your thoughts. I'm going to play this and give you my thoughts, of course, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, and another thing that you're probably wondering about, you know, what's he going to play? Is he going to play the official campaign? Well, the answer to that is yes. Play that all the way through. I think it's uh, a great campaign. It's got its issues. Some people object to the storytelling elements. We'll get into that in this video. Uh, but I do want to do another video after this on Neverwinter Nights 2 Mask of the Betrayer. You know, I get a lot of people when I brought up this game, they told me, don't even play the official campaign. Just skip right to Mask. It's by far, you know, even uh, beyond Neverwinter Nights 2, it's one of the best uh, RPGs ever. <laughs> I mean, it really gets just outstanding reviews. Everybody seems to love it. So I thought instead of trying to, like, uh, you know, just put a Mask of the Betrayer in this video, it's sort of an afterthought. You know, I don't want to do that. I want to give a whole video just to Mask of the Betrayer. We'll do that next. Uh, for this video, though, I want to do the official campaign. And what I'll do as usual, I'll play a little bit of the first part just to kind of show you what that looks like and then skip on to some of the later scenes. Because, you know, like a lot of these games, it's a very long campaign and it gets better as you go along. It gets certainly uh, more com complex. I think your characters can level all the way up to 20 uh, in this. I got to about 18, 19. <laughs> it definitely gets more exciting, I think, as, as you go along. I uh, do want to show you some of the opening. Uh, so that's my plan here. And I'll just tell you, too, I don't, I don't think you should skip the official campaign. You know, I haven't played Mask yet. Uh, so we'll, I'll, I'll save my thoughts on that, of course, until I have. I'll play that all the way through, completed it. Uh, but I don't think you can go wrong with this official campaign. It's got its issues, certainly. But, you know, I think even if... Uh, I, I didn't hate it. Definitely didn't hate it. I thought it was uh, a lot... There's a lot more positive things I could say about it than the negative stuff. Plus, I'm not a big story guy anyway. Uh, I'm not this this guy that everything hinges on whether every dialogue option leads to some kind of meaningful choice. <laughs> and I'm not uh, having... Uh, fantasies about the uh, NPCs in my sleep or whatever. Uh, you know, for me, it's mostly about the tactical combat. It's about developing characters, customizing characters, getting to explore interesting places, uh, having a reason to come back or, you know, play that extra hour, not wanting to go to bed quite yet. You know, you're, you're <laughs> at that one more milestone you want to hit. Uh, and, that game, and in those ways, I think this official campaign delivers. In fact, I think I probably like this campaign a little better than the first one. Uh, the first official campaign. Uh, okay, so let's uh, get into our character creation process. And as you can see, uh, it's, you know, it's been a little while since I played Different Winter Nights 1. And I want to talk about some of the differences between those uh, two. You know, it does use the same engine, basically, but they updated the, that Aurora engine with what they call the Electron engine, basically to put in some more, a little more visual bells and whistles. Uh, but what's probably more exciting to me is the these added races. And there's lots of stuff under the hood. A lot of uh, D and D mechanics. This is a 3.5 edition rules, by the way. Uh, but a lot of gameplay changing elements were introduced as well. Most notably, that old henchman system. I don't think anybody really liked has uh, been sort of revamped here. But uh, let's save that for later and get into character creation. Okay, so the big change is in, in addition to these. Uh, sort of standard fantasy races. Now you have the Plain Touched, the Yawn T, Pure Bloods, and the Grey Orcs. And if you just do the recommended option, it's human. And I just want to say a word about why you might want to pick the humans. Is that, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is not obvious first time you play. But your character, the player character, let's just call him that, is the only one that will be able to multi-class. 
you think, well, what's the big deal with that? Well, you're going to be finding, say, a druid, a, fly, a lot of fighters, sorcerers, wizards, and so on. Uh, but they're kind of stuck in that rut. <laughs> uh, your character is the only one that can be, say, a fighter, and, and then you might want to pick up a couple of uh, rogue classes, and so on and so forth. Kind of a big deal. A lot of people enjoy multi-classing. Uh, so that might be a good reason to pick the human, because you see here the human's favorite class is any. What's a favorite class? Well, that means that when you... <laughs> I'll just read this. When determining whether a multi-class human suffers an XP penalty, his highest level class does not count. So there's uh, some issues. You know, D&D &D doesn't want you to just have this uh, character that can do everything uh, and just be totally awesome, do every class. And so they kind of put these uh, penalties on you. So the sort, of, sort of the more you spread yourself out, the thinner you get. And the way they implement this is with the XP penalties. So if you play the human, it doesn't matter. Any sort of combo you, you could think of, uh, you know, if you have two classes, say fighter and rogue, and your fighter is like level 12, your rogue is level 6, you know, whatever that may be, uh, you're not going to take a XP penalty for that uh, fighter class, if that makes any sense. So you'll be doing pretty well, I guess, as long as you just stick to two. I don't know if you, I don't know too many people that want to have like three or four, uh, but certainly something to think about, uh, especially in this game with all the uh, prestige classes that we'll get into. But anyway, instead of doing the humans, I want to do the Yanti Purebloods. I was uh, reading about these guys today. You know, I haven't played one yet. I haven't played this class. I don't really know a lot about them. I thought they were just kind of bad guys. I seem to remember killing a lot of these Yantis uh, in the previous game. Uh, but if you look at their racial traits, they get a plus two to dex, plus two to int, plus two to charisma. And there's a class that goes with these traits that I think will be fun to play. Uh, let's see, we've got Dark Vision, which is uh, going to be pretty cool, as you'll see, because it pairs well with one of their abilities. Uh, they get a plus one natural armor bonus, always a plus. Uh, they get some spell resistance, but this is the part here, not Snake Senses. Yeah, Snake Senses, <laughs> sorry, uh, that I wanted to, to, this is the reason I want to pick these guys. So they get... Yeah, who cares about alertness? They get Blind Fight as a free feat. And what the Blind Fight does lets them fight while blind or against invisible creatures for free. And there are quite a few of those sort of concealed creatures in the game that are hard to, to hit. But what's neat about it is that they can fight while blind with this feat. They get that for free. And then one of their spell-like abilities is Darkness, which basically levels the playing field. Makes, <laughs> it makes the... Uh, uh, the character you're fighting, blind, temporarily sort of turns the lights off. But I'll be able to see with my uh, blind fight, Snake Senses. So that's a pretty cool uh, pairing there. I'm kind of curious how that's going to work. And also, they this this will scale as I level up my darkness, just like the Sorcerer uh, classes. These uh, will get better. You know, it's like at level 2, level 3, that'll be the equivalent of my darkness. I get that extra time on that. So really cool. So that's the favorite class is Ranger, but I'm going to disregard that. And pick a different class. Level adjustment plus two. Okay, so let's go with that. Now I can adjust my height and stuff. You know, it's not a terrifically robust system here, but yeah, you, know, you can play around. Get get the. Uh, I kind of like this look. <laughs> it's like he's got the uh, the snakeskin boots on his face. Kind of cool. Uh, we could pick a different hairstyle, I guess. Yeah, I don't tend to spend a lot of time on. On these factors usually I have a helmet on most of the time anyway however there one of these options is a really cool sort of mohawk I think that's probably appropriate I'm kind of curious why they don't have more options here for hair colors and hair highlights you know you think there would be some kind of wacky colors you could pick you can make his eyes green if you look real close his eyes are kind of reptilian which is cool Okay, anyway, let's uh, move on. Uh, so for classes, again, a lot of this stuff you're familiar with from the first game. But I want to swap down here. Well, I want to talk about two things here. One is the Swashbuckler class is what I've selected for my character for this, this video, this opening. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff I like about this class. It's basically kind of a fighter, a finesse fighter. So you, instead of being this big, strong guy with a big double uh, 
double-handed axe. Nothing wrong with that, but, you know, just for something different, try the finesse fighter. Uh, this guy would be a little more dexterous, a little smarter. He's going to privilege his uh, intellect more, so instead of just trying to hit as hard as he can, it's more about, you know, where's the best place to hit? So kind of, again, kind of that rogue element in here. Uh, but he gets a d10 for his hit die, so we'll get a lot more. I think a rogue is like a d6. So basically a lot more, a lot more health. Uh, base attack bonus, all this stuff. Simple and martial weapon, so he's not limited to just a few weapons. But he does get an advantage on his, uh, on the finesse weapons like the rapier, daggers, and so on. Short swords. He's uh, only proficient in light armor by default. It's fine. Lots and lots of great light armor in this game. Uh, the weapon finesse. So he gets this for free as well, a bonus feat. So this is basically already two bonus feats I'm getting. The blind fight and here's the weapon finesse. Uh, so we'll talk about what that does uh, later. Uh, Grace, Swashbuckler gets a plus one bonus on reflex saves. Uh, the bonus increases to two and so on and so forth. So re reflex saves will be good. Remember there's uh, two or three different types of saves, reflex, will, and fortitude. So I'll have at least one of those covered somewhat. At third level, we get Insightful Strike. Uh, that'll, that'll take a while to get there, but not as long as it will if you do the uh, the sort of tutorial stuff. I'm going to skip over this video, but you're welcome to do it. Okay, Swashbuckler Dodge. Plus one Dodge bonus DC against melee attacks from the current target. That also increases. See, a lot of this stuff is lost if you switch to medium or heavy armor, so we're definitely going to want to stick to light armor you get a uh, mobility as a bonus feat i mean it's, what's not to like about this class so far it's like all the stuff i would normally have to use my feats for i'm just getting for free uh but if we go all the way down here now well, let's see where is it one of these is about intelligence and I always forget which one it is i think it is yeah it is insightful strike so at third level you get to apply your intelligence bonus, if any, as a bonus to, on the damage rolls. And that's in addition to strength. So a lot of times a warrior, even if you pick uh, uh, one of these finesse classes, the you raise up your dexterity, that makes you more accurate. But you won't be you won't get that damage bonus. The damage bonus is only coming from your strength, which you don't always want to have uh, put all your points into strength. Well, this gives you an interesting option of uh, being able just to ramp up your intellect and... You start, you're basically getting that int bonus as a strength bonus, or in addition to a strength bonus. So I think that's kind of interesting. I'm really curious about how this will work out. You know, if you didn't want to multi-class into something later with some spells, or something that would benefit from intellect as well, uh, you could use that. Uh, but another thing about this game, again, the dialogue being so central, having a better intellect means you got more skills, means you can put more points in it conversation skills like diplomacy and so that might turn out to be a really good thing for my player character so anyway we'll try it out you know it sounds good looks good on paper but will it perform <laughs> let's see uh, alignment you know it's not a huge thing in this game you can have uh, chaotic evil characters in there in your party even if you're lawful good so it doesn't limit you that way uh, there is an alignment system in the game, so it'll say sometimes, well, you've done something really evil, so it'll bump your alignment towards evil, or towards good. Yeah, you know, it didn't really seem to have that big of an impact on my game. I, I played a lawful good. I usually pick lawful good. I'm pretty sure most people do. Uh, so, uh, for my first game, so I think maybe for this video, I'll try something a little different. I was looking at chaotic good. I'm trying to figure, get my handle or get my uh, mind around this alignment. Axis is conscious directs him with little regard for what others respect. He believes in goodness and right, but has little use for laws and regulations. Follows his own moral compass, which may or may not agree with society. A ranger who waylays the evil barons, tax collectors to protect the common peasants is chaotic good. So I don't, you know, I don't know. Does that? <laughs> I try to think of like modern, what that would look like in modern times. Uh, the neutral good character does the best that a good person can do, devoted to helping others. A cleric who helps others according to, the, according to their needs is neutral good. Doing what is good without bias towards or against order. 
Yeah, it seems like it's getting really finely tuned here, but I'll try the, uh, I think I'll try the chaotic good this time just to see what happens. I'm almost tempted to be evil since I'm kind of a snake guy. <laughs> you know, what the hell? Uh, I'm a yawn tea, right? We can try the lawful evil. Uh, let's see. Lawful evil villain methodically takes what he wants within the limits of his code of conduct. He cares about traditional loyalty and order, but not about freedom, dignity, or life. Yeah, see, that's just... <laughs> There's just certain things I don't want to roleplay. No love of order. Holds no illusion that following laws or codes would make her any more noble. Doesn't have the restless nature of love of conflict with a chaotic evil villain. <laughs> so I kind of like conflict. A chaotic evil villain does whatever his greed, hatred, and lust for destruction drive him to do. I, it's kind of interesting they switch to the male pronoun here. <laughs> there's some stupid stupid news article about this kind of fresh in my uh, memory. This business with the pronouns. Yeah, so if you're talking about chaotic evil, it's okay to switch to the male pronoun. Uh, anyway, we'll have some fun with that later. I think it's interesting that these pronouns, even though I said I wanted to be male, uh, they're switching all around. It's kind of weird. Uh, anyway, let's see. Chaotic evil people can only be made to work together by force, and their leader lasts only as long as he can thwart you know, I just I <laughs> should always come back to lawful good. <laughs> I, I just can't help myself. I guess it's just who I am. You know, I kind of wonder, like somebody who used to pirate software back in the day with that. I guess I'd probably have to be chaotic good, right? Or <laughs> chaotic evil, I guess, for a software publisher. All right, then we got our choice of deity, and we could try to pick one that goes along with our alignment. You could just say none, I guess, if you want to be uh, an atheist. Bane. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Awful evil. You know, some of these I've never heard of, and I've read plenty of uh, Forgotten Realms books, but I guess some of these are kind of minor minor figures. You know, I think uh, Obsidian's approach is just to put everything in there, you know, if it doesn't, doesn't really cost them anything to slap another god, <laughs> another deity into the mix. Yeah, you, know, you get a few little things. Like, that's neutral evil. Let's see if we can find a... I went with Tear before, just because it was lawful good justice. I'm not... I'm kind of not sure what this favored weapon business is. You know, is that just something that's... Is that, that it's there for flavor text? Like, the god likes a longsword? Or does it mean I'm going to get a, a longsword at some point from Tear? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's see. Just in case, let's see if I can find one with a finesse weapon. Let's see. Uh, flail. I'm not sure what a flail. Is that a light weapon? I saw a dagger there. I was thinking maybe a rapier or a short sword. Good God, look at all these. <laughs> Good gods. Now this one's, there, there are, for whatever reason, whether this was just me or what, but I found... I don't know how many awesome scimitars and falchions and kukris and all these like sort of exotic weapons uh, in this game. So that might, you know, normally you think a scim scimitar, you're not going to find many of those. It's not like a, you know, I think scimitars, I'm thinking like a, a sort of Arabian Nights theme, something like that. Uh, but there's plenty of scimitars here, so don't worry. I I'm kind of gravitating towards a rapier, though. And I notice this Malil has a rapier. Also, the portfolio, it's like these guys have resumes or something. Uh, their portfolio includes poetry, song, and eloquence. Which, again, that's kind of conforming to my idea of this swashbuckler. You know, I'm imagining this Robin Hood type figure. He needs a little poetry, a little eloquence, kind of a musketeer vibe, maybe. So that working for me. So we'll go with that guy. Now, here we have the old point-by system, which is... To me, the best kind of system, I like this a lot better than the, having to answer a bunch of questions. Uh, it's kind of vague, like, how's this going to end up? Or uh, the old uh, roll, like, re-roll, re-roll feels stupid. You know, I'm not rolling dice here. I have a thing called a computer. It's a solo game. Anyway, you know, I want to make a character that... Uh, I don't want to just depend on die rolls necessarily for my character. So I think this is cool. Uh, my... 
experience with this and you know I haven't really looked at any of these min max guides I don't know what the best advice is who cares right uh, what I like to do is just make sure I don't have penalties on these items because there are lots like this wisdom is tied to your will saving throws and you can basically it's a strong person there but there's a lot of other ones and you don't want if you get charmed or stunned or paralyzed or whatever you're kind of out of it so that's it doesn't really matter how strong you are if you're paralyzed <laughs> you're gonna get get killed uh, so I don't like to see penalties there. I don't necessarily think I need an 18 wisdom uh, I definitely don't want to see red and I think I've mentioned this before but something I didn't know if, for many many years playing these games I had no idea what this plus one business was just ignored that you know, I was used to looking for this, this these uh, main scores but that's just kind of a... Uh, you don't want to do that because it really the only thing that matters is these blue numbers. So, like, this this basically means I'll get a plus two damage bonus on my melee attacks. If it's 13, or if it's 12, or 13, it doesn't make any difference to the game system. The only thing that'll matter is whether it's a plus two or plus one. So, knowing that, you know, again, think about... You know, your main sort of thing is going to be with this character. We said dexterity is has a finesse, weapon finesse, so that means that instead of just strength, I'll be able to use my high dex to hit better. Now, it won't affect the damage necessarily, so we don't, we don't want to just ignore these other things. So I'm going to do this, and also since I, I know I'm going to get a damage bonus on my intellect as well, I'm going to go ahead and bump that up a little bit. Uh, maybe all the way up to 14, we'll see what we can do. Because I like the, the higher the intellect is, the more skill points I get. And I, I really want to have a lot of skills on this character so I can bump up all the other stuff like the uh, the social skills I was telling you about. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. You know, it, it really wouldn't even hurt to bump up the charisma. Because, uh, again, there is so many, so much of this game is based on those dialogues, being persuasive, being rhetorical. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to go too high again. So I think maybe I got a couple other points to play with here. I'll go ahead and bump up the strength. You know, another thing about strength is it determines your, how much you can carry. <laughs> and that's actually, you don't want to be leaving loot behind. So I always like to see a healthy number there. And uh, keep in mind, too, there will be points where you can raise these up a point or two. Uh, so even though what I was saying before, like you don't want to have like a 17 is not going to do anything for me. But it won't be too long before there'll be a chance to raise that up a point, get it to 18 and get that uh, extra bonus. So it just kind of depends. Do you want something you can use right away? If so, you might want to do something like that. But I'll go ahead. I think these are decent scores. I will go ahead and put one extra point there and a couple other points in the strength. Let's go with this. You know, you can sort of obsess about that if you want, but sometimes I think it's more fun just to experiment. See if you like it. It probably won't make that big of a difference anyway. Uh, then we have our uh, backgrounds. I'm trying to—I don't remember if this was in Neverwinter Nights one or not. I wish I had the other game up here just so I could do a quick comparison. But of course, this is in the new, uh, the newer versions of D and D, the 3.5, obviously. So really, I think most of this is intended just to give you a little bit more of a role-playing. So remember, the in the older games, they might have a thing there that said background. You just were supposed to type in some whatever nonsense you came up with on your own. I just <laughs> I just skipped it entirely. <laughs> uh, but this, you, you could plug in one of these and you might get a few dialogue options here and there. And they go back to like, well, you were a wild child, Matt. You were a crazy kid. You know, maybe that gets brought up in a couple of dialogues. Who knows? It says, yeah, it says a grant minor bonuses alter the way some people view your character. Uh, the main thing I look at is the how it affects your stats. Uh, most of this is skill based. Maybe it's all skill based. We'll see. So you have a you have to have at least a dexterity of ten to be the wild child. So you get a little bit better survival, better tumble. That'd be cool. Better hide. Better <laughs> move silently. But then you take a hit on lore and appraisal. Now, just in my experience, the lore basically just. It does affect some dialogue options, but it's used mostly to identify items. So if you find a sword, you don't know what kind of power is on the sword or anything about it. If you have a high enough lore, it'll go ahead and identify that tell you what it does. 
The thing is, you're going to find plenty of NPCs, or plenty of uh, player companions, I guess, that have a lore, so it's not a big deal. Uh, same thing with the praise. You know, it's not a huge thing. Uh, the appraisal just makes adjust the market prices. There are a few dialogues where it comes into play. Uh, this one, if I oh appraiser, see, I guess you could be an appraiser. So that you get free two free points in appraise, point in lore, which is nice. You lose a point to spot, negative two to bluff. I don't really care about spot and sleight of hand, which is basically pickpocketing. I'm a little upset to take two away from your bluff because you might use that. You know, depending on how you how, how you role play. I do like the appraise and lore. You know, there's always going to be a trade-off to all of these. Like, this one is, makes you worse at intimidating people. That one affects your diplomacy. That one affects your diplomacy. This one affects your will save. You definitely don't want that. Parry, I, just, I, I don't like parry. Some people swear by it basically just means instead of uh, attacking things you're uh, re reacting to their attack which is a great i guess if they're attacking you but if you're not the one that's being attacked <laughs> good luck with that uh, let's see none of these look absolutely ideal i i ended up doing the ladies man on you know i don't remember what i, I think i picked wild child before but i was really tempted by this ladies man you know, I like it because it kind of feels sort of 90s. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of surprised that it made it in. We'll talk about this. This is not a very politically correct game, at least by modern standards, which I think is great. Uh, but we have this ladies' man background. I'm pretty sure this has been removed in more recent games. Uh, what I like about it, just statistically, I get this point to my listen, a point to diplomacy. And the only thing I lose is, is, is intimidate. Which really, that's usually better for evil characters anyway. So I don't feel bad about being the ladies' man. And these uh, packages here... Uh, I don't ever really use these. For, if for whatever reason you don't want to pick your own feats, you can do the package. I mean, I think that's kind of crazy. You know, why wouldn't you want to pick your skills and feats? Unless you are just in a in a real hurry. Okay, so this takes a little bit of explaining. The These ones in blue here are my class feats, so I can only... It only costs me one skill point to bump it up a skill point. So you see I got like this pool of 24. Uh, the ones that aren't in blue, though, it's going to cost two points to raise that up. So it doesn't mean I can't you know, raise it up. It's just I might not want to, or I might want to focus on what I'm good at and develop that out. Uh, but there's some other considerations. I think some of these skills are essential, even if you do have to spend more points. And keep in mind, too, when you multi-class, you might get a different set of uh, skills you can level up. I mean, it won't be different than this list, but the, uh, the ones in blue will be different. So I'm going to go ahead and do. We'll raise up the bluff a little bit. That'll come in handy. A couple of the conversations there. I guess there's a feat that goes with it. Faint. Not familiar with that. Uh, crafting... You know, that's a, that's a thing in this game for sure. You don't necessarily have to do it. You can play the whole game without crafting anything. Be fine. There's plenty of good weapons you could find. Uh, really, the best the best crafting I was able to do was later on when I got a couple of feats. One was craft uh, magic items. And uh, I think it was wondrous items. The other was called craft magical arms and armor. Basically, it lets you... Hey, you want a flaming sword? Boom, there you go. There's your uh, D6 <laughs> flame damage on that sucker. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but you, that has nothing to do with craft weapon. You can sit there and pump that up thinking, I'm going to get a flaming sword one day. No. Uh, the only thing you're going to get with craft weapon, you'll be able to use more advanced uh, metals. So instead of just iron, you might be able to make it out of uh, adamantine, adamantite, whatever that's called, adamantium. Uh, and you get a basically kind of a free enchantment if you do that i think some of the some of the metals work better against certain monsters i mean you, you kind of have to get super detailed for that to really apply to you uh I, the only i guess you know if you want the best possible everything you might want to have this these crafting stuff built up 
But, you know, my experience, you're going to find plenty of, uh, again, the player characters you find. They're not going to benefit at all from any kind of uh, bluffing or conversation skills. So those are a moot point for them. So you might just want to let them uh, carry your crafting burden. Not even bother with it on your main. Unless you just really love craft crafting, if that's what you see yourself doing. Uh, go for it. Uh, diplomacy, huge, huge, huge. And a lot of people, yeah, give bonus treasure. I mean, you're definitely going to want to... You only have to go up to four starting out there. But that's one I'd constantly be working on. Uh, lore, again, you'll be able to find companions that can identify items for you. I think it's a little bit useful, though, in conversation. Sometimes it'll pop up with a lore option. And here's this parry business. I don't, I don't really get this. So you may only parry. You have to activate the parry mode. It's a special mode you activate. And you get, may only parry a number of attacks per round equal to the number of attacks per round available to the character. So basically, they attack you, I guess, sometimes. And not only do you block it or parry it, but you get to do this counterattack. 5, 10, or negative 5. I guess the higher the parry score, the better. Now, I just I never used it. I, I found it difficult to use. I saw a lot of other people don't like it either. Some people are going to love it. You know, I've tried it out before. It just didn't, didn't work for me. <laughs> it's just kind of bizarre. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to strike you. I'm just going to wait for you to attack and then parry. Uh, huh? Uh, taunting. Taunting and tumble, I think, are great skills, though. The taunt, it's not like World of Warcraft where you taunt somebody and get them to focus on you. Now, that might work well with parry if you could do that. But uh, anyway, uh, taunting, it's an ability. You can use it when you, whenever you like, I guess. And it uh, lowers their AC and their concentration. So if they're trying to cast a spell... Uh, you might be able to uh, lower that concentration, make it easier to keep interrupting them with attacks. Uh, the only problem is they get a an attack of opportunity on you. So make sure that I'm right about that. <laughs> I tell you, uh, higher ranks somewhere though. The enemy must make check special. Using taunt provokes attacks of opportunity, and taunt penalties are not cumulative. So they basically get a free swipe at you if you try to taunt them. But tumble is uh, lets you get out of attacks of opportunity, right? Anytime the character might receive an attack of opportunity for moving past an enemy, they will automatically attempt to tumble check against a DC of 15. If successful, the attack is avoided for every 10 ranks. The character's armor class is also improved by plus one. So I think that bit about the armor class is, is pretty cool. It doesn't include the dexterity bonus, but... You know, you get that up one more point. If I'm reading that right, you get some a bonus to your AC. So I'm not sure if the tumble would work with this taunt attack of opportunity, but I'm getting a little bit too lawyer lawyerly. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm a lawyer, a lawyer, attorney, uh, looking at these rules, trying to interpret everything. Okay, so that's that's all I'm going to do. I'm not even going to bother with uh, the parry this time. Instead, I might look for another good. Even though I won't get the full uh, points, I might look into some of these other options. Uh, concentration, even though this guy is not a spellcaster, he does have those spell-like abilities. And those do provoke attack of opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point in the concentration. And there was one other one I was looking at that I... You know, you'd think listen would have something to do with uh, conversation as well, like I'm a good listener. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just uh, for, I guess, spotting... Uh, was it just hidden creatures, I guess? I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, there, where was it? Yeah, I was thinking about either Spellcraft because it gives you a bonus when dealing with... Let's see, what is it? The character gets a plus one bonus for every five ranks in the skill. All saving throws against spells. So just like with Taunt, it makes, it a little, it makes you harder to hit. Tumble might give you a little magical resistance. But the magic device, I think, might be the way to go. Because you do find lots and lots of wands... 
scrolls. Yeah, particular scrolls, and there's just all kinds of magic stuff you're finding all the time. And it'd be pretty cool, because you can even have characters make wands, or make scrolls, and it'd be cool. Basically, you get like this wand suddenly, that, and now you're casting the spell. <laughs> even though you're a fighter class. So I think that's pretty awesome. I'll play with that some. Uh, okay, now here's the feats. And you see here, we got the weapon finesse. And the blind fight for free. Our weapon finesse. What that is, let me just make sure I got the rule right here. I think it's your dexterity is used for uh, instead of strength, whichever one's higher for determining a hit. See, so a character with this feat is adept at using light weapons. That'd be something like a rapier or dagger. Allowing him to make melee attack rolls with his dexterity modifier instead of his strength if his dex is higher than his strength. Uh, so this is cool, kind of lets you focus on decks instead of just having to put everything into strength. Then we've got our list of weapons there, daggers, kukris, light hammers, rapier, short sword sickle. So I'm going to try to get a rapier at some point. So we got that for free, got blind fight for free. But we can, as a swashbuckler, we could use any of the martial weapons. But again, you know, why, be, why have all these uh, swashbuckler proficiencies? and advantages and then use a heavy weapon and heavy armor and lose all that. You might as well just be a fighter or barbarian. So what I like to do here, just go to recommend, see what it recommends. You know, it's usually not a bad choice. As you can see, you know, this they want me to get dodge, I guess because I have a good AC on this character. Plus one dodge bonus to AC against attacks from current target. <coughs> I'm pretty sure Swagbucklers get something kind of like that. I don't know if they get that for free. I think it was mobility they get for free. But you see that I had to get dodged before I can get mobility. So that would be something to think about. Uh, another really, really good one for any kind of melee class. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, the power attack. I think power attack by itself kind of stinks. I don't like it because you lose uh, your damage. You, get, you do more damage, but you miss more. And again, it's kind of stupid to me. I don't care how strong you are, if you, how much damage the attack would have done if you had only hit, right? <laughs> but you missed, so it's all a moot point. I'd rather hit and do a little bit of damage than miss and do none. Uh, you know, I know maybe the math works out over time. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a stats wizard here, but it just doesn't sound smart to me. Uh, but you need power attack in order to get cleave and great cleave, and those are amazing. You get up, you go up and get a bunch of a big group of uh, rats, kobolds, whatever. You kill one, you automatically get to swipe at another one. If you kill that one, you automatically get to swipe at another one. So some of you just run in. Just... Next thing you know, you got twelve dead rats flying all around you. And I tell you, that's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> so uh, you might want to go with that. Uh, but again, since I'm kind of going more for the the swashbuckler type, maybe I'll take the recommendation and go with dodge. Uh, I would like to. I say I don't know when I get the free mobility feat. I think if you get this as part of a class or a race, it'll give it to you even if you don't have the prerequisite. But you know what? It doesn't hurt to to dodge. You know, again, if I'm going to be in light armor, I don't want to be taking lots of hits. So maybe that's a good. That's probably pretty good advice. Then we can randomize her name, or we can just name ourselves Mateo Bartonolius. Bartinelius? <laughs> I think I had a... I was playing around with the names like Bartern. Kind of sounds snaky. Not sure what a yawn tie. Maybe we'll stick a tie on the end there. <laughs> really snaky. My guy will even hiss. It's pretty cool. And then we could pick our voice. And there's even a voicer called Swashbuckler. A mature Swashbuckler. To the fight, my friends! Ooh, he's so Attack! So mature. <laughs> oh, good, definitely picking that. <laughs> no question. And let's see, age. So how old is Matt? I don't know, man. We'll just go with 39. Seems to be the best age. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the game. So many years ago today. Ah, my foster son is up and dressed, I see. 
Today is the High Harvest Fair, and the West Harbor Village Council requires me to man the archery competition. The human need to celebrate Remembrance Days baffles me, but at least something productive may come of it. The merchant Galen is here. He'll want my furs, as he usually does. Coins can be useful in getting by. This past season has been a hard one for both tilled fields and wildlands. While I attend to the archery contest, I will need you to deal with the merchant. Fetch my furs from the chest. Over by the painting. <laughs> oof, oof, oof. Yeah, so... Uh, this game has been heavily criticized. Especially for this... Well, whole op original campaign has been criticized. I don't think that's fair, but it's certainly fair to say this... This opening bit is dry and dull, and... You know, I get it. This uh, Foster... Dagon Farlong is supposed to be this dry, emotionless, unsentimental kind of guy. Uh, cold. Uh, but really, uh, you know, I just imagine somebody that was coming to this game that wasn't already crazy about CRPGs. Somebody hadn't played a lot of them. And, you know, sees this, you know, that first opening bit there. You're just like, what have I, <laughs> what, what have I done? <laughs> you know, I spent 60 bucks on this. You know, back in the day, or 20 bucks today. Uh, really, just, I don't know who was, what somebody was smoking when they did did it like this. I mean, horrible. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, you look at, you compare this to, say, the opening of Baldur's Gate 1 in Candle Keeping. You know, to me, there's no comparison. This is literally going to get a fur out of this guy's chest, <laughs> go sell it, get a bow. Uh, then there's this Harvest Fair thing going on. It's like something out of a GRPG uh, Chrono Trigger. Uh, a lot of this opening setup, you know, it's very... Some people would say it's cliche, right? you got the little farming village getting attacked, yada, yada. Uh, it's, you know, you've seen it in Dungeon Siege. You've seen it in I don't know how many games. That part doesn't bother me. You know, I'm fine. I don't really give a rat's ass <laughs> if the story is cliche. I don't need depth and meaningful choices. Uh, all this, but don't be boring. Uh, that's that's what I don't. Don't the be boring. The village is under attack. West Harbor is under attack. You're safe. Grab a weapon. We need to help defend the village. Okay, so we're not going to be boring at least here at the. Uh, once we get, <laughs> I just you notice I skipped the whole tutorial. You can do that if you want to go click on a chest. <laughs> if you want to figure out how to go to a merchant and sell an item, you know I I think you'll be okay without it. Uh, the only thing is there is there is a couple of funny bits in the tutorial or pre chap prequel whatever you call that the uh, intro prologue there we go there's some pretty funny uh, episodes I don't want to spoil those for you because I think you're going to need them to get through the tutorial <laughs> uh, but you know go ahead and do that tutorial I think you get some items you might get a level or two out of it uh, so yeah go ahead go do it at least once. Uh, but for us, we're just going to skip through that because we want to get to the good part. Uh, really, though, this game, I don't think it really gets going really strong until you get to way on, way into the... I don't know how many hours it is, but eventually you do get to Neverwinter, the city. <laughs> and things get a lot more interesting at that point. Uh, not, I'm not saying I hated the opening, uh, but it does... It takes a little while to get really good, let's put it that way. Uh, but anyway, just like in Dungeon Siege, we're, we're here in this little farming village. It's getting attacked. You know, who, who are these people? What's going on? What are they after? <laughs> what is this silver thing they're uh, after? And there's also... Uh, there was a point made in the Wikipedia entry uh, for this game. They had a quote there from one of the designers. I don't know if it was Fergus or somebody. I didn't know his name. Uh, but they said they wanted to make a point here in the intro that you're a nobody... Uh, that you're nothing, that uh, important people are doing important things and you're not one of them. <laughs> so, uh, I don't really get that vibe from this. You know, we're finding out that, you know, just like in any of these games, we are kind of a key person. You know, I, who wants to play a game where they, you know, what's the problem with that? I mean, I, I, I'm playing this game, I, I paid my 60 bucks. <laughs> Make me feel special. <laughs> Make me feel powerful. <laughs> Uh, if I wanted to feel like a, a runt, I'd go play uh, an MMO, right? Uh, anyway, let's see what we've got. Oh, yeah, and then the other big gripe people have is, you know, I think I, I hate to see somebody just nitpicking a game to death. 
not showing any gratitude, not showing any appreciation for this. I mean, you had a lot of talented people that worked very hard in this game. Yes, it's got some bugs, and yes, some stuff could have been done better. But, I mean, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do this, and I'm pretty sure those people complaining <laughs> wouldn't have been able to do it either. Either, And, you know, what would you rather have? A bunch of these uh, uh, nasty people saying nasty things about everything or actually have some fun games to play. Um, and I do, I do think it, you know, I've talked to some of these designers, and they, they read that stuff, and it makes them feel bad, discourages them. And then guess what? You end up without... Uh, without another game to play. You know, I would love to have more Neverwinter Nights games to play, personally. <laughs> and also, uh, you know, I don't want to try to destroy somebody's confidence by just bad-mouthing and, and harping about every little negative thing that you come across. But really, there's lots of good stuff in these games. But but anyway, I don't want to go on for too long. It's just kind of a soapbox of mine. <laughs> I, I just, I'm not a fan of those YouTube videos or the reviews where they... They get off on like trying to be as as mean and abusive as they can, you know. It's not my, not my style. Let's put it that way. Uh, okay, so we got this. One of the gripes <laughs> was the dialogue options are basically too simplistic. Uh, you know, you sort of got the lawful good, the lawful evil, or the lawful good, the chaotic evil, and then some sort of wishy-washy answers every time. And and beyond that, they don't really make that big a difference other than maybe an alignment point here and there or an influence point with an npc i'm sorry i keep saying npc a henchman whatever you want to call them uh, going up and down you know fine personally i've always said this my ideal system was the gold box system back with pool of radiance back in the late 80s they had this instead of having these dialogues written out like this for what i'm going to say instead of this they would just say well, okay, do you want to be nice? Do you want to be abusive? Do you want to be haughty, arrogant? Uh, I'm trying to think of the other options that they, they had back then. It was haughty, meek. Uh, I forget what the other options are. But, but anyway, I, I like that system because it let me think, you know, if this were a real role-playing, uh, if this were a tabletop role-playing game, uh, you would the dungeon master wouldn't be giving me a list of things I could say, right? I just say whatever came to mind, uh, and then he, uh, he or she would respond appropriately, right? So I don't. I think that system in the gold box was a little closer to that. Like all I do is decide: what well, do I want to be nice to this guy? Do I want to be mean to him? Uh, do I want to be a butthead? <laughs> do I want to be stupid? You know. Uh, so just give me the adjectives, and then let me imagine what it is I'm saying. Uh, that makes a lot more sense to me. I wish the games would just use that instead of this uh, trying to write out and make me select exactly what it is I'm going to say. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't bother me that bad. We could try to get more information, but I'll <laughs> just say let's go. <laughs> okay, so you would know these characters a little better if you had played that tutorial. Uh, I will say that you don't want to spend a lot of time leveling these guys up customizing them because you're not going they're not going to be around for very long <laughs> spoiler alert <laughs> uh, so you know I would just go with the recommend recommended options and you can see like I say you, you can't even multi-class her if you wanted to she's just a wizard I really wish you could keep her because I like uh, I like her a lot better than the sorcerer character you find later on uh, there's another wizard you get to eventually he's, he's really cool but he's got some issues too. I'd, I'd love, li love to have her, and I'll have more to say about her in a minute. You're gonna, you're gonna like that. So anyway, I would just go recommend. It's not that big of a deal. Same thing here. Just, uh, you can pick the spells if you want. Not gonna make a big difference. Wow. So these guys are already level three. So that's probably a pretty good reason to do the, uh, go through that prologue because you'd probably be level three as well. So I'm gonna be starting off the game at a pretty bad disadvantage because I'm only level one uh, for whatever reason makes absolutely no sense it should have probably bumped me up to level three too since I skipped the prologue but oh well that's my punishment for being arrogant <laughs> and skipping hey they were tired on that prologue buddy you don't get your two levels eh. but Chris uh, knockdown that's a pretty cool feat. 
hopefully we get to see that in action. Okay, I guess another level. Just I'm just going again, doing the recommended things because I happen to know. We won't get to keep these guys. They're just kind of a little starter party. I would say yes. Another thing to, to know is if you hold down the Z button by default, you get to see what you can click on. And there's a, an empty chest. How exciting. So that's an important key. And the other important key is F12. <laughs> to save the game. You're going to want to save this thing. You know, you want to be anal about it. Just constantly saving. And then every now and then, instead of just quick saving, go into save game, create a different file. Uh, just in case something happens. Because it is quite easy. It's happened to me a couple of times. You, you make a mistake, you hit a certain bug, certain glitch, and suddenly you're just utterly screwed. You won't be able to complete a quest or even complete the game. Uh, so it's it's nice not to have to go too far back. And so just keep it, that in mind. Uh, unless you want to just play on like Iron Man mode and be real tough. But again, you might hit a bug. Nothing to do with your skill level. Uh, and suddenly you're you know, having to replay a bunch of content. So just be mindful of that. Are you sure you want to be going in there? <laughs> Your father is the most understanding person I've ever met. Uh, the other thing to, to bear in mind is the, the camera controls. Let me just talk about them briefly. So it seems like everybody complains about the camera controls and you know, you can tell they were kind of struggling over there at Obsidian. Again, they're trying to update this engine with the uh, some new bells and whistles. And the one idea that I guess was to have three different modes for the camera. So you got the character mode, the strategy mode, and the exploration mode. And I'll just talk about each one briefly here. So the exploration mode tries to be like a Something like World of Warcraft, maybe, is what it reminds me of. So you're kind of using WASD to move. You use the mouse to, to spin around. Uh, the nice thing is it will let you move the camera all the way up and down. So that's, if you know, if you're trying to see, you know, over an in incline or something. Works that way. I just, I don't find this, doesn't feel right to me, you know. It's, it doesn't feel, <laughs> I mean, for one thing, I'm getting that roof tile. Or whatever that is. That doesn't look too good. But, you know, I just feel like I can't get a good, you know, who wants to play like this? You know, it just uh, <laughs> doesn't feel right to me. I, I don't I don't like it. You know, this isn't an action game. This isn't, this isn't Witcher. Uh, so that doesn't really work for me. The strategy mode, you know, I'm not quite sure what the, what this is supposed to accomplish. I guess you kind of get this top, it's kind of weird angle. It's like the camera is a little bit above, I guess, is the idea. So you can look down, kind of a top-down perspective, and move your guys around in combat. So that might be a little bit useful. Uh, but I just use this exploration mode. The only thing I don't like about it is, you see, it kind of hard locks the camera, so I can't quite go up and down as much as I'd like. Not a big deal here, but there's several levels where it's like a, you know, you're going up a steep hill. And you just can't get the camera the right way no matter how much you, f you futz with it. So that's something. I, I played it enough where I got used to controlling it. But yeah, it took me a long time for that to feel natural in, in any of the modes. And I still don't quite like Yeah, I just don't quite like it. You know, if you're coming to this straight off something like World of Warcraft, you think, wow, they, you know, this just doesn't feel smooth. doesn't feel easy to control. Uh, I don't think it's a deal breaker. But... It is kind of annoying. You think with three different modes, I mean, you know, that's a good example there where I think sometimes instead of trying to have three different modes, just have one mode and make it really, really good, right? <laughs> Let's see, I think we already got a book here about uh, crafting. Yeah, so this will tell you things like the alchemical silver ingots are effective against devils. Well, if you really want to min-max everything, you can try to find the... Like, this is the perfect metal. Maybe you got three different swords, one made out of each kind of uh, substance. So you can really get that full advantage. 
We also have a <coughs> what is this amulet of aid? <coughs> Three inch diameter gold disc <coughs> with the holy symbol. <coughs> Excuse me. Arvarine inlaid in platinum. All right, so we have this Arvar Arvarine's amulet of aid, and it can only be used by it says it cannot be used by an evil creature, which kind of makes me wonder what's it doing in the chest. Does that mean that uh, Mateo's stepdad? Dur Durgan, Dagan, <laughs> was evil, so he can't wear his necklace or his amulet. He's out in battle, maybe just forgot it here. I don't know. Uh, but there's a couple things, and I was thinking this. There's so much, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff in a game as you're playing it. You don't ever bother to look it up. You don't really care that much. But when you're doing a video, you kind of you don't want to be BSing or giving wrong information. <clears throat> so you have to look stuff up. And it really would be nice to know this as you're playing. And just a quick example of this. You got this business with the charges and this number in parentheses here, and you're like, what is all this? Uh, what I thought it meant, you, I went down here to use, it says use A, three parentheses, three in parentheses, one charge use. I thought that meant that I get three charges. But then I look up here, it says charges six. I'm like, what's going on? Uh, well, well, as it turns out, the three here means the level of the spell. So the, a lot of these spells, if you're level 1, <coughs> it doesn't do as good as if you're level 3. Same spell, but being a level 3 sorcerer, level 3 wizard, whatever, cleric. If you're level, a level 3 cleric casts aid better than a level 1 cleric. So this is basically saying you're, it's like you're a level 3 spellcaster. So if I found one that was aid 6 or 7, that would be even better. But uh, what I want to pay attention to, one charge you use... Some of the items you find, I guess, might have, uh, might take up two charges, but you just want to look up here and see. I got six total uses, and after that, it'll be worth a worthless item. So you find plenty of items, though. <laughs> you can't recharge items, unfortunately. That would have been cool. But, you know, I, I kind of just say, I usually, I'm, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> Terrible hoarder with this stuff. I end every one of these games with, like, every amulet. Uh, hundreds of undrunk potions, all these scrolls, it's crazy. Uh, really what you want to do is just, if you can use it now, use it when it's going to do you the most good. So right now I'm level 1, i got this, all these disadvantages, so I want to be using this aid spell you know, as much as possible. And that'll give me, an, it'll make this opening a little bit easier to deal with. So when we get in the battle, uh, I might switch to that. Okay, so we talked about the camera not being ideal. Let's talk about the, the party AI. So you can see one of the... You can go F2, F3, you can click on these guys, you can... If you go in and adjust your settings a little bit, tweak it a little bit, you can make your left button a marquee selection. Just That's the marquee, the green square. So you can do that. But you notice there's no... There's no way to say party formation, right? Like in the Bar Bal Baldur's Gate where you had like the nice triangle formation or whatever can't do that there you can only get them to follow you so she goes far enough away they'll follow and if you go into C hit the C key go into behavior you got little options here you can set puppet mode just turns basically says they will uh, not do any artificial AI you can say well follow me but follow me at a distance or close medium <laughs> medium distance is not really helpful <laughs> it does give you a sense of like how many uh, feet we're talking about. You could say disarm traps wouldn't make any sense for a mage to be doing that. But, you know, you could set all this stuff. Automatically do things. Stealth. Uh, Spellcasting is kind of an important one. So, if you're playing on the normal difficulty, and I'll still talk about that in a minute, you can usually rest in between battles, get all your spells back. So you might just go overkill. You know, just boom, right away. Hit, hit them with the biggest stuff you got. Uh, or you could try the power casting mode, the scaled casting mode, or just say don't cast any spells. Then you just have to remember to come back in and do this. <clears throat> or if you don't trust the AI enough to cast spells for you, you might just say off and then just manually go in and cast spells. <clears throat> Certainly an option. Uh, the AI is a whole different discussion we'll have to get into later. And some of these other options, the summoning... Uh, you know, she's got a little familiar she can cast. You could say, just leave that on. Polymorph. Be more for, I guess, a druid or 
Uh, if a mage had a spell, maybe they turned him into something. As you can see, most of this is pretty self-explanatory. Some of these are kind of weird, like you could say... Uh, monsters damage allies at area of effect spells based on alignment. So you can make the monsters, if they're casting, say, a stinking cloud, <laughs> it might affect uh, uh, their own as well. Uh, Warlock, one round hideous blow. Some of this is really specific stuff. The enemies auto cast buffs. I was looking at this too. This is interesting. So if you don't feel like you're getting challenged enough, I guess you could say, look, have the enemies already be buffed up. So whatever potions they have, scrolls, it'll make them more powerful. Go ahead and take those before a battle. Make it a little bit harder. Uh, but, you know, plenty of ways you can customize that behavior. You can also turn off the AI here. You just want to quickly turn it off and back on. Yes. You know, what I find is most of the easy battles, you can just go with the AI, it's fine. And if it's really, if you're getting defeated a bunch of times, though, you probably want to go in, turn the AI, AI off, and then go in and, like, hit F to bring up their spell menu, lay out what you want to cast, you know, put a little more manual, <laughs> uh, put a little bit yeah, of your own mind. thought into Follow it. Me. It's certainly not the smartest AI in the world. And just beyond that, characters are frequently getting stuck on stuff. She's coming coming around that time. But a lot of times they'll get if you're in a cave, they'll just stay at the beginning, won't follow you for whatever reason. They just stop working. Uh, that happens. Uh, sometimes the AI again just stops working. They will be getting attacked by an orc, <laughs> and they're just standing there getting attacked, not doing, not moving. You're like what the hell? Have to go in and uh, reload sometimes to to get it to uh, start working again so basically a lot of i'm not sure to what extent those are bugs <laughs> or features or what uh but it is something that does kind of diminish the quality of the game you might be able to address some of that with patches but but it's an issue okay last thing before we get in before we go out there is the i want to go under game options here and talk about the difficulty because i think this gets into some uh, design issues so obviously the the biggest thing with an RPG, or I think the the really the, the sign of a great RPG versus a good RPG has to do with difficulty. And specifically the way they balance things. You know, do you feel like you're making a smooth progression, gradually getting more powerful, taking on more challenging monsters, you're getting sort of new abilities at a at a time uh, when it makes sense, you don't feel like you're overwhelmed or underwhelmed, but you know, just just right. Uh you know, you don't feel like you're just getting unfairly uh, bashed in battle. You know, that's, I think, the hardest thing to get right. And the, the problem is, if it's done well, you don't notice it. You know, so nobody comments on it. It's only if it's done badly. It's like the bad toupee, right? <laughs> it's only the... You only notice the bad toupees. Uh, you only notice the games with uh, with a bad uh, progression, bad difficulty curve, bad learning curves, and so on. <laughs> I think you can look under the hood here a little bit and see that they were really struggling at Obsidian to try to make the things work. And one of the reasons I think, it's got, you know, using the 3.5 rules or using any kind of tabletop rules in a computer game has, it's going to have some issues, right? Because it's not going to translate. They're not, it's not a perfect, it's never going to be a perfect translation from tabletop to desktop. And you really see that here. Stuff that would be trivial in a uh, tabletop game, or for that matter, in a turn-based game, when you go to this real-time with pause mechanics, suddenly stuff gets to be uh, very complicated from an AI perspective, or just even from a gameplay perspective, represent, representing something, directing the action. It gets to be uh, cumbersome, if not impossible. And you see that right here in the difficulty. So keep in mind, this is the normal level of difficulty. This is the default difficulty level. In other words, what they want you to play on. <laughs> so, uh, this is as, as intended to be played on. And you notice the first item is they turn off PvP, or, or basically friendly fire. So fireballs and other area effect spells will not harm party members. So boom. Uh, why is that? What is the big deal there? Well, in the you know the fireball... It's a very powerful spell, but the trade-off is you could hurt your own guys with it, right? If you just, it's just like a grenade. 
you know, if you're in close quarter combat, somebody lobs a grenade into the mix, uh, that's going to hurt your guys <laughs> as much, if not more, as the bad guys. You know, you're like, you idiot. You know, you, you got to throw that thing at a distance, right? Uh, the problem in a turn-based game, it's fine. You know, you can see you got three turns until they get to you. Go ahead, throw the fireball. Uh, you know, your, your other guys will be safely out of range. In this system, though, with the AI and the real-time with pause, everybody's running everywhere. You never get that clear moment of, like, there they are. Go ahead, throw the fireball, boom. <laughs> you know, nine, nine, 99 out of 100 times, one of your idiots going to be in the end, going to run in, not avoid the fireball, get hit by it. It just basically makes all the uh, AOE stuff useless for all intents and purposes. So they just say, well, let's just change the rule, just turn that off. Uh, unfortunately, also, I mean, suddenly your wizards are unbelievably powerful. You got all this. AOE damage you can do without having to worry about hitting your players. <laughs> you could say, uh, well, go ahead and make it hardcore rules and then it, turn this on. But again, for the for the purposes of game or computer game in this real time with pause, you're probably just going to be driving yourself nuts. And you'll just never use any of your AOEs because it's just too hard to keep your guys out of the, out of the zone. <clears throat> now, some of this other stuff, like the... No critical hits on PCs. You know, again, something like this makes me think, you know, you know they didn't get the balance right. Uh, I should be able to get critically hit occasionally. Uh, you know, the, the armor should be such, the enemy, the damage should be such where that shouldn't be that big of a deal to occasionally get critically hit. And, and plus, there's there are feats I can get that will uh, mitigate that, right? You notice if I turn it on, back to hardcore rules, you can get hit again. But it seems to be some issue there. They were having trouble with their math somehow. <laughs> so, again, they said, you know, normally we'll just leave that off. Uh, same thing with all these other ones. A lot of this, you know, you could you could tell basically what happened. I'm sure they, their testers or their play testers were saying, look, it's just too hard. You know, our characters are dying. You got to do something. And so instead of getting in there and, like, doing their due diligence, really making the, the math work, uh, they just said, they just turn off critical hits on PCs. Boom. <laughs> kind of that, it's got that executive decision feeling to it to me. Uh, a lot of this stuff does. But, you know, to some extent, it's just a concession to the uh, nature of the real time with pause, which I'm not a fan of. Never been a big fan of that. Uh, I like the turn based stuff better uh, for all these reasons. But anyway, let's get out of the house and show you some combat. Yes, indeed. Hi. Okay, got these guys there. Let's Follow get out. Me. How did I say we were going to get out of the house? I was wrong. We're still in the house, but we are down a story. And we get our first combat. Okay, so here we are. Let's try, let's try out this strategy mode. And I haven't really used this mode much. We'll see if it works well for us. So what I did, I... I put the P in the real time with pause. I hit the space bar. Boom. We're paused. Now there's... I think it was... Uh, was it Temple? No. Where was it? Uh, Pillars of Eternity. One of those games that had a... You had like a slow motion mode. I <laughs> thought was fun. Uh, here we just paused or not paused. There's no like step kind of button, which would be cool. But, you know, there's a lot we can do with this. It's not... It's not a... It's not like it's a travesty. You know, we could pause. We could take a look at these our enemies. You see the gray dwarves or Durgar. I tell you, give a little bit of flavor text there. Only cruel jokes and petty torments bring a moment's smile to most gray dwarves, and they delight in terminate tor in tormenting the weak and the helpless, and terminating them. <laughs> Challenge rating challenging. It looks to me like they're a little bit concealed. Not sure what's up with that. Uh, one of the things that's really lacking here, you know, even if they've got spells on them, buffs, debuffs, it doesn't show up anywhere. You know, there's sometimes a little icon above their heads, which is kind of hard to see. So that's kind of annoying. You know, same thing with your guys. It'd be nice if they had more, <clears throat> a few more indicators. Well, let's just see what we can do. It's not going to be a real tough battle, but why don't we just go all out? Oops, I forgot to memorize my spells. So we'll just stop here. We're paused. We're okay. 
Uh, so you could go through each spell and see what it does. You know, and actually, <clears throat> knowing that you're going to lose these guys pretty quick, uh, this is a good chance to experiment, right? So maybe pick a spell you you don't really know what it's going to be like. You know, you go ahead and try it out. You wouldn't want to use you wouldn't want to learn these spells on your <clears throat> character you wanted to use a lot necessarily. But here, you know, you could just play around, see what uh see what you want to use. I don't normally pick a large person, for example. And we got invisibility. <clears throat> I remember when I was a kid I, I had this I thought invisibility was like the best thing ever. Like, man, just make yourself invisible. You can just run around the battlefield, you know, stab everybody. <laughs> oh, come on, Matt. You know, it's as soon as you do anything, it's going to make yourself visible. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> of course it would. Um, I'll pick it, though. What the hell? Even though I'm pretty sure I would like the other ones better. <laughs> now, something else that's really cool I'll show you later is uh, up here under Quick Cast, we've got our... I think these are just normal spells, but later on I'll be able to get these meta magic feats. Uh, one of them is in power, so you like do more damage or maximize, do the uh, most damage possible with that spell. Uh, but the ones I like the best are Extend, and there's one called Persistent that is just unbelievably awesome. Uh, so the Extend makes it last twice as long. So something that only lasts like 60 seconds will now last uh, two minutes. Uh, but if you may, if you get all the way up to Persistent. Uh, that means it lasts 24 hours. So, man, you put a haste spell on your party for 24 hours, everybody's attacking, you know, moving at twice the speed, getting extra attacks. I mean, that is unbelievably, unbelievably awesome. And it also helps with a lot of the, uh, the protective spells, displacement, anything like that. A lot of those are really cool. They're really great spells, but if it only lasts, you know, six seconds, you know, what's that about? Uh, you get the extend spell that persistent though suddenly it makes sense uh, to have it in your uh, in your spell book all right so I'll go ahead with her if I look up here the AI has decided to go ahead and cast summon creature but I can add to that you have to be very careful what you do here if you cancel this spell she'll just sit there for a turn or yeah sit there for a whole turn do not or around I guess and not do anything uh, so you just want to add something else maybe Let's try to enlarge a person. Let's enlarge <laughs> Mateo. <laughs> I would say yes. Okay, now we can click on him. He doesn't have the spells, but he's got spell like abilities. Entangle, darkness, charm person, cause fear, animal trance. Let's try the uh, the darkness. But I've got a feeling it's not going to be very useful here. Because I'm pretty sure dwarves have uh, dark vision. They can see in the dark anyway. But just to show you what that would look like, we'll go ahead and cast it. So my idea is to put everybody in the dark, and then I can use my blind fight, my snake sense, uh, to get some uh, advantages yes, on him. And then finally, this guy, I don't think he's got much to do other than just attack. I think he does have his... Uh, knock down feet. We could try that, see if we can knock one of them down. Bring it to me! Boom. So, okay, got everybody set up. We can go to back to our fight, character, hit the space bar to unpause, Attack. and then they should execute those orders. So there goes my dark. Now, the thing that I, I hate about this system, my number one beef... Also, I did light this up. Okay, so it's showing these guys are concealed. That's cool. Uh, what I hate is it doesn't automatically... The, the character you're controlling will not automatically attack. And it's inconsistent. Sometimes he will, sometimes he won't. Seems like most times he won't. So he's standing there, he's not doing anything, and if I just let the battle run out, he might just stand there the whole battle and do nothing. Uh, what they want you to do is manually click, and sometimes it's even hard to find, like, where are the enemies? You, know, you kind of have to scroll around, find one, click on him, activate that attack. And you have to do that every single time. Or you at least have to be checking for that to make sure it's attacking. Major annoyance. Why the hell can't you just say, attack whatever's nearest, unless I give you some specific orders not to. Go ahead and attack whatever's uh, wailing on you. I mean, come on. I don't know if they were trying to be more like Diablo with this, this idea that you got to click on every skeleton. Uh, I hate it. I think it's stupid. 
Uh, but anyway, it's just you have to get used to it if you want to play the game. So we'll go ahead. All right, so he's attacking. You know, another cool thing, just like in Neverwinter Nights, we can pause this, we can look and see what the rolls are doing, see what these hits, what's hitting, who, what they're casting. So that'd be useful to study. A lot of times, if you're getting your butt kicked in a battle, uh, instead of just reloading right away, what you want to do is study the some of these rolls and see if you can find out, well, maybe somebody's resistant, absorbing, whatever. Like here, we see attacks of opportunity happening. That's another big, big, uh, big cluster you know what with the AI uh, I don't know how many times these guys they will just you will be screaming at your computer because for no apparent reason one of your guys just tears off right through a big mass of enemies and they're getting attack of opportunities attack of opportunities <laughs> you're like what are you doing why are you doing that uh, just the zero sense I mean it's absolute crap AI doesn't happen all the time, but it happens often enough to just make you, you know, want to yank your hair out. Uh, uh, a workaround for that is just to make sure everybody has tumble. Remember, that's the skill that lets you evade the attacks of opportunity. Uh, and sometimes it works in your favor. You know, a lot of times uh, an enemy will just go off, tear off after a random uh, character, and you can everybody gets attacks of opportunity on them. But it's it's really bad. You know, it's it's like. You know, you almost just wish they would even have it. If it's going to be that poorly implemented, just don't even have the attacks of opportunity. Uh, it's just kind of a big pain. Uh, but anyway, again, not a, it's a, more of an annoyance than it's something that's going to make you not want to play the game. So, you know, so I don't have any weapons yet, so I'm just fist fighting. But I, I learned earlier that uh, unarmed attack or fist weapons, they're considered light weapons. Finesse! It works out pretty well. Okay, I think we're... Are we done? Yeah, look at that. We're done, and we don't have a scratch on us. Now, here's another... Again, I feel like I'm becoming one of those guys that does nothing but complain incessantly. But, you know, if you look over here sometimes, and you see I've got some debuffs on me. So my dexterity is decreased. My attack is decreased. You're like, what the hell? Am I cursed? What happened there? Uh, they don't tell you. <laughs> I mean, I happen to know that it's the uh, it's that enlargement spell I... that she cast, right? If we go in and look at the spell more closely, somewhere it says, "Yeah, so you gotta you get bigger, but you also lose your, uh, your dexterity and your get a penalty to, to attack rolls." So there's some negatives that go along with it. It's really why I never use the spell. <laughs> I don't like these spells that cut both ways. Um, so I could just rest to get rid of it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and Follow loot the stuff. And yes, there will be some problems with the loot system as well. And there are some actually some mods that will help with that. Go ahead and loot uh, our stepdad's desk. <laughs> All right, so here's what the inventory paper doll, whatever system, whatever this is called, looks like. You can look at your armor. He's got light armor on. Uh, now this is another aspect. If you know D&D &D well, you know about the dexterity bonuses. But just in case you don't, this is another thing. I didn't know what the hell this was. So basically, even though we've only got a base armor class of 2 on this piece of gear, uh, if we're really, if we've got a good dexterity, we move fast, and you know mine's a 15, so I get a plus 2. So it's almost like I get another 2 on top of that. And it goes all the way up to 6. So, I mean, I could have like this insane dexterity... And I could get away with just wearing leather armor. Uh, I could find some armor that was had a better base armor class, but it might have a less of a dexterity bonus. So it kind of ba basically what it amounts to is it kind of cancels each other out. <laughs> uh, and I think you're probably better off if you got the high dex. Go ahead and find some armor that will let you leverage that bonus, because uh, you don't want to. You know, this will have some other. The heavier armor has other penalties associated with it. Uh, why why have those penalties if you don't have to? And then we pick our weapons, and you notice some of these will be medium weapons. The short sword is the small weapon. doesn't tell you what's light or not, but if you remember from the earlier, we know the short sword was the light one. The club, I'm pretty sure, is a... I don't know if it's a, considered a heavy weapon, but it's certainly not a... It's a simple weapon. I don't know if it's a 
die. Light weapon. So we'll give her the quarter yes, staff. Uh, he's got a long sword already. Give that to him to sell later. <laughs> uh, we can get in and look at the uh, the numbers a little bit here. So see with his club plus one, he's going to get an enhancement bonus, which is the attack bonus. So he'll get six. Take that off. He only gets five. Let's compare it to get the long sword. So Follow me, yes, talking indeed. about here. So he gets also gets a better bonus with his long sword. He must be proficient in a long sword. Yeah, he's got a weapon focus long sword. So he's kind of set up to use that long sword. So really, he's better off with that long sword than he would be with his club, even though it's club plus one. So I might want to. I would say yes. Give that to my. Uh, Mage, hopefully she won't be using a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of melee yes. attacks, but we could try that. And then let's see what we can do with this. Uh, we got a healer's kit here, and if you go into the skills again, you can see who has heal leveled up. What's up? I. She's got a heal score of yes. two, so it makes sense to give her the healing kit. And you have to have those healing kits and able to use the heal. And you always, I think, want to put that on. A, you want to at least have it on a character with a few points in that to make it more. You don't want to waste your healer's kits. Okay, so I got everybody armed up a little bit. Yes, indeed. I would say yes. Yeah, I think we're good to go there. I got the short sword. Definitely need to find some armor. Now, you might want to run out of here, or you could hit R, rest up, get your spells back, get your abilities back. And then one other thing, while I'm thinking about it, you can go ahead and cast your mage armor spell. So I'll show you how this works. So she's got a... Where's her AC? She's got AC at 12 right now. Cast the mage armor, which lasts for an hour per level. She's level 3 already, so... That should last quite a while. I wish it would go ahead and tell you. It's another thing that's I wish. Like, why can't they just say she's got the... It just says AC increase. doesn't tell you where that's coming from. <laughs> you just have to remember Mage Armor. It would be a lot better if it would have Mage Armor and tell you how long it's got left on it. But again, a lot of this stuff got resolved in later games. If they ever make an enhanced edition of this, I hope they will yes. you know, make stuff like that a little better. Alright, let's go see if we can get into some more treadmill. There you are. I saw some of those creatures enter your house, and it is good to see you safe. I don't know where these beasts came from, but we need every sword at the southern bridge. More of these creatures are on the way, and in greater numbers, Georg is trying to gather the militia. But I fear he would not be able to marshal the defense in time, and without help, this village will fall. <laughs> you know, is it just me? I know we're supposed to feel so bad for these villagers, and we grew up here and everything, but man, I'm like, like half of me is like, who, these are some of the the whiniest, most annoying, craven uh, people that you meet in the game. I mean, I really wouldn't feel that bad if they all got slaughtered. You know, they, they kind of have it coming to them. You know, if you're not out there defending uh, your village. Um, and, you know, it's the funny thing is, later in the game, you keep coming across people, and they're like, oh, yes, the he's from Harbor Town. Uh, he's from the Harbor Town, Harbor Village, whatever. You know, they're known, West Harbors, they're, they're known for their bravery and their courage. I'm like, BS, have you been there? <laughs> these, guys, these guys are like uh, uh, cowering in a corner somewhere. Okay, we have a couple other ideas. <laughs> if, if Georg is in charge, this village will fall. <laughs> uh, I just Head don't. south along the road. I will stay here and look for the wounded, then join you. Georg should be at the bridge. Join him quickly. He will no doubt have orders for you. But before you go, take this blessing from Lathander. All of you. If you are wounded or need another blessing in the fight ahead, simply return and speak to me. So this guy is literally a wounded man. Bring it to <laughs> like, me. like, right next to him. He's not doing anything. He's just standing there. All right, but the cool thing is he will give me that blessing of Lathander again. The sucky thing is it, will, it doesn't say anywhere what where the blessing is coming from. But, you know, okay, enough of that. So let's see what we've got. A gray dwarf chilling out over there. Got some more back there. Go ahead and take them out. 
Excuse my short sword. He's going straight for my my it's wizard my there, Amy. See, there goes uh, Bevel tearing off. But I have to tell my guy to go over there. <laughs> Let's go. I killed him quick, though. Looks like we got some more over there. What are these guys doing? Yeah, see another example of that camera being a nuisance. Doing pretty well so far, I think. You know, something else I didn't know the uh, first few time, first time I played this back in 2006. You know, you always think you'd be better off, or at least I always think, why why not get a shield as quick as possible? Why not or get two weapons? But there's a lot of uh, trade-offs with that. And actually, a lot of times I found in this game better off just to have the weapon, not to have a shield or a second weapon. Even though it's a one-handed weapon, you can use you can use both hands. You can use it as a if you if, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> if you don't have anything in your other hand, you get some you're more accurate with it. Okay, this guy wants to talk to me, but before we do that, I will loot everything cuz I cannot help myself. <laughs> and loot system, thank thank God. They got a sword inventory. So think, I don't know whichever one of those gods in that huge deity list, Pantheon, <laughs> blessed us with this, but at least we can sort stuff. That's that's really good. You can we got some potions here you can drag on there if you want. Yes indeed. I would say oh, yes. Let's see what else I want to say about this. There's some kind of wag see, he's running off somewhere. There's a wagon here. And I'm guessing this probably only works on the expansions. Because it won't do anything here. It looks like it's like a party inventory. I don't know what that is. Never used it the whole game. Where the see like where is this guy going? I guess I better follow him. He must have seen an enemy somewhere. No, he's coming back. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, look, she's huge. Okay, this guy wants to talk to me. Let's see what he has to say. Thank the gods you made it. There's been no sign of your father, and I feared you'd been killed as well. I have no idea where these creatures came from or what they want, but the ones loose in the village are only the first wave. More are coming. A lot more. If we're going to stop them, we need someone to rally the militia and meet them head on. Well, I'm glad we got to this guy. He's a much, I liked his uh, voice acting a lot better than a priest friend back there. So rally them then. Yeah, don't just stand here. Go rally them. Uh, anyway, it's a game, Matt. Come on, calm down. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to save this, though. So rally them then. I can't leave the southern half of the village exposed. Not while more attackers keep pouring in. Now go. Ah. When you've gathered everyone you can, meet me at the wheat field south and west of here. We'd better search the town, try to gather who we can, and I hope we can find enough still alive. He can't move a few feet to <laughs> He can't move a few feet to go recruit this guy. <laughs> He's gotta guard this uh, little area, okay. Um Oh there's some more loot. Get the loot Tingle, baby There's some more loot. <laughs> I don't know, it's it's the simple things. Like that dagger there, you know, you get that and you're like, oh yeah, I can, oh could use that as my offhand but look what happens you get an attack bonus of negative three because I don't have uh, the feet for uh, the dual wielding two weapon fighting I think they call it so that would actually be a, I'd actually be worse be better off just to have the the one weapon there okay and let's see we go talk to our old friend Ward now if you play the prologue you get into a fist fight with this the Mossfelds. So he's a little bit sore at me, I'm sure. <laughs> Come to gloat, Mateo. Still, I look up. I took a bunch down before they got me. Uh, sure, you did. <laughs> Should have stuck a little pile of corpses around him. Uh, so you can be, again, you can be a smart ass to him. You can be nice. Damn creatures. 
Uh, he's looking for his brother. Uh, we can go get this guy patched up. Because our priest friend over here, he can't, he can't move. <laughs> but he can give us some, uh, he can give us some, uh, moss, I think. Now take this moss. You know, when I, I didn't realize this back in, when I first played this game, I thought moss, some kind of magical moss. Okay, that's kind of weird. But, uh, you know, if I... Some of these are survival shows and survival books, kind of a hobby of mine. I like to read about that. Sort of, you know, like surviving in the woods when the when the shit hits the fan kind of stuff. And apparently moss does have these properties. So if you are out in the woods, you get cut, got nothing better. <laughs> the moss, and they didn't just make that up. That's a real thing. And of course, it probably doesn't work as well as, as in this game, but, you know, it's, I like to file away information like that just in case. Uh, so there's one of our five uh, militiamen recruited. Only four more to go, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Like, this village, I feel like it deserves to fall. I mean, look at these worthless militiamen. Oh, we got another battle here. Now, you, you can see there's some of these guys are trying to cast spells. And if you can get up next to a spellcaster, you get a free attack on them when they try to cast a spell. So that would be ideal. But, can I make it past this guy here without getting a attack of opportunity? Probably not. Let's see. So he was able to tumble successfully. So already, I just got a few points in that tumble, and you can already see how, how useful that could be. So I'm going to be able to get right up next to these guys. who are probably the bigger threat anyway. Boom. Take care of them. Bevel's on this guy. There's another little uh, patch of them over there. And then Amy, I guess she's back there summoning her dog. That's okay. But again, okay. I took out this wizard right in front of me. He's got a wizard a few feet away. He's just gonna stand there and let him cast a spell. He's not gonna go. He's not gonna go over there and whack him with a short sword. <laughs> no, because I've got. That's just not the spirit of the game, man. You can't... What do you want, man? Do you want the game to play itself? Well, yeah, kinda. You know, I don't, I don't want to have to click on every, every dwarf. Clicking on dwarf. Oh, what is this? Someone get the militia. These things are all over the place. There's another tumble. All right, at least she's got enough sense to get out of the way. She backed away to cast her spells. That's pretty good. But on the other hand, there comes another dwarf. <laughs> Why did he... He must have had a potion or something. He got sort of big. He's, he's the world's tallest dwarf. Where's that wolf? Where the hell is that wolf? you think the wolf would be protecting her. Got some arrows. Yeah, it just... It bugs me that I can't get the camera up higher than that. I guess I was still in... Uh, well, it's even worse in this mode, so never mind. <laughs> Alright, what is this? Ian Harmon. So look at this guy. I mean, to the extent that the camera will let you look at that guy. <laughs> huh? Get away! Didn't you see those creatures out there? They're killing everyone! Yeah, and you know, when you sign up for the militia, you know, uh, what, do you, <laughs> what do you think you're, you're doing that for? Why do you think a militia exists? What do you think you're... Anyway. Uh, Georg, we gotta get this guy to quit cowering here. What, you came to drag me out there to die? Not on your life. I'm staying right here. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get political with this, but, you know, I'm sure you know people that sign up for things, shall we say, and then they're happy to collect the check, but then when it comes time to actually do the job, suddenly they <laughs> have a big problem with that. <laughs> it's like that's happening here in, in this uh, West Harbor. Okay, so now, you, if you look here, now we get lots of options. So some of this will use my diplomacy, some will use intimidate, bluff, lie. But what it doesn't tell you is whether this will work or not. Now, I think some of the, you know, I wish they would give you the, uh, the odds. Now, that would be cool. You just kind of have to remember, well, my diplomacy seemed like it was okay. Or you could try to taunt. 
You know, sometimes you'll even see a praise here. Uh, so you really don't know what you're going to get. We could try to use our diplomacy. But I Success. tried to fight. There's so many of them. Too many. All right, maybe we're being a little too hard on this guy. I don't know. <laughs> Report to Georg and fight, you coward, or I will kill you before the enemy does. Or we could just say, others will join you, but you'll die alone if you stay here. All right, all or right, I'm going. Hit him. <laughs> I'll meet you there. I'm not dead when you arrive. All right, so we got two out of five done. And I think there's one. At least this guy's a little smarter. Who's there? Whoever you are, you aren't getting in here. So at least this other guy's not literally cringing in his front yard. At least this guy's got enough sense to get inside and lock the door. Okay, can we get this guy out? It's Mateo, open up. There's a call for the militia. Come on. I'm not going out there. I'll be cut down in seconds. And I'm not letting them inside to loot my place. Not while I'm still standing. <sighs> I'm sensing a theme here. Okay, let's just bash down the door. Maybe we can... What? What did you say? Let's show him. After you. <laughs> let's show him! After you. After you, Mateo. Do I have to do everything? You know, I might as well talk about this while we're looking at this. So it's, you know, if I had a lockpick or a thief with me, I could just click that and uh, she'd run over there and pick it for me. Or you could manually select her and say, go unlock it. Uh, or if I... I think this is the de default. If I hold down the right mouse button for a second, you have to hold it down a little bit, and then it'll come up with this uh, sub-menu, I guess, and you can see one of the options there is to bash. And we can whack at it with our sword for a while. Would be kind of nice if my henchman there would join and help me to bash it, but, you know, oh well. Okay, it's down. I'm going to go inside. Why did you do that for? Now they can come in. <laughs> now you can go out and fight. <laughs> because that was the problem. <laughs> it's a door. We just bashed down the door. Now you can go. Uh, your belongings aren't worth this village dying. Now go. <laughs> I don't care about them. I'm here for the valuables. <laughs> uh, what the hell's I will? I'm not going anywhere. People are dying. You know, you're just like, man, this is, this is what, the second person in this village that hasn't wanted to defend it? Uh, lie, I swear we will do what we can to protect your belongings. If you don't, you won't make it through the night. Very well, I report to Georg. If I spent all season saving for a run to High Cliff. <laughs> Boo-hoo. <laughs> Stop whining and go, damn you. Okay, what is that? Your journal has been updated. Reporting for duty. Okay, I guess that's just updating. Now, I could go ahead and loot, loot this stuff, but I'm pretty sure that would move my alignment towards uh, evil. Alright, we got to get two more of those militiamen. Alright, so let's... I want you to really study what's about to happen here. Okay? <laughs> We got Tarmas, who, if, again, if you did the uh, the prologue, this is the basically the mage trader, the master wizard here in the village. He's uh, training. So he came to West Harbor some years ago. Being of sour disposition, he generally avoids the villagers. He's actually a pretty funny guy to talk to in the prologue. He bears a grudging admiration for swamp-dwelling villagers and has been known to take on promising youngsters as apprentices. He's like the master mage, right? Now he's up against this Githyanki, which is the way you pronounce that, Githyanki mage. And reciting spells in a language unlike anything you've ever heard, this mysterious creature is putting Tarmas's arcane power to the test. Challenge rating, very difficult. Now he is wounded, but keep in mind, very difficult. He's, this, uh, he's, he's kicking this master mage's ass, basically. He's definitely giving him a, a very tough time. 
Okay, so we're keeping all that in mind, right? Let's just see what happens uh, when I go over there. You three stay out of this. It's too dangerous. Master, just hold on. We can help. Okay. So the world seeks to test itself. <gasps> How pathetic. Blast it! The rest of you, stay where you are! I shall waste no more time on this pitiful village. It is not here. Okay, so did you catch that? I mean... Here we have this young, untrained girl. She goes up against a master mage uh, that's giving, uh, you know, her trainer a hard time. Uh, she wants to, you know, show who's boss. Uh, instead, he just quickly takes her down and kills her. You know, this is very 2006. <laughs> and I think that's why I love it so much. All right, anyway, we are down a wizard now. That sucks. She was a good wizard. <laughs> you know, I kind of was, you know, if this game had been made today, she would easily have been taken out that gift Yankee and probably uh, uh, really embarrassed her. Her master wizard there. I mean, she wouldn't even have a master anyway, right? Uh, but anyway, the, the downside of it is now we've only got two people and we've got three spiders. So let's uh, see what we can do. Uh, I'm pretty you. sure I can. Take that. Whoa, okay. Maybe I don't even need to break out the spells for this. I do hate fighting anything that can poison me. Usually that will kill, kill you faster than anything else. One more. Boom! The stupid girl! I told her to stay out of it! So There's more to do. Georg and the militia <laughs> are holding our attackers at bay on the Starling Farm. We must hurry before the tide turns. We need to find help for Amy. Uh, yeah, I think she's dead, dude. Well, you know, I guess you could... There are raised dead and resurrection scrolls. I don't think we'll find any at this point, though. <laughs> What's he want me to do? Uh, I guess go join the militia. If only I had more time to gather equipment from my home. If you make your way there, you may find some magical and alchemical equipment of use. It's to the north. Now go! Okay, so he's in such a rush, he doesn't even have time to go get his equipment. <laughs> Let's just go get it instead. <laughs> uh, on the positive note, though, we can loot Amy's corpse. You know, I was kind of, I was kind of joking around about this, but you know, a lot of people have really got upset. Not so much, you know, she did something stupid, she got killed. But the problem is, you got no control over it, right? It's sort of, the computer just took control, that she went out, and she's, she's going to do what she's going to do. There's nothing I can do to change it. Uh, so people objected to that. And you'll see it throughout the game, they'll, they'll be giving you uh, story elements. They'll be just showing you uh, the bad guys talking. And there's like no way your character would possibly know what was being said. Uh, so it feels a lot more like a movie than you know, seeing everything through the eyes of your character. So it's, there's kind of clunky stuff in the game like that. Again, I'm not a big narrative guy, but for somebody who is, that was very upsetting. All right, let's get this party back. On the road, what do we got over here? Wagon. Still looking for some loot. We got to go inside this wizard's house, he said. North of the bridge. Now, this is kind of weird. I got this mini map here. It won't let me put pins wherever I want. I can click on something to light it up in my little mini mini map. Makes it a little bit easier, I guess, to see where I'm going. Oh, we got another guy here. Will Mossfield, do you? <laughs> if it isn't Will Mossfield, my dear friend. <laughs> uh, we can help him out, right? I'll give him those herbs. Now we got four out of five. Poor old Amy. Oh, why won't it let me examine her? 
Another little glitch. I guess I didn't think anybody would want to examine her. Okay, let's go and get the whatever Tarmok, Tarmas, Tarmas? Oh, what's going on there? Bladeling! Mysterious humanoids, not from this world. Bladelings, as the name suggests, have metallic skin covered with sharp blade-like protrusions. Oh, is that what the name suggests? You know, I, I would think, of, when I think bladeling, I imagine this little, <laughs> cute little butter knife. I'm a, I'm a bladeling, look! Going after your toast. Oh, he's dead already. Don't know where my brothers are, Mateo. Let's go! <laughs> what is going on here? It's like nobody in this village can look two feet Bring away. That tumble success again. Why is he even tumbling anyway? You know, I think they get. I think what's happening here is the, the characters get jostled a little bit by characters next to them, and the system interprets that as a, moving out of a, trying to get out yes. of combat. So there we go. There's our five. And I don't know if there's more I can try to recruit. We could certainly try. Now I've got a spear and a bladeling spike. And the uh, bladeling spike, if you look at if you examine it, it tells you that it, if you have four ranks in the alchemy, then you can use your mortar. Even we don't have it yet, but you've got a mortar and pestle, and you'll be able to make a faint power essence. And you'll need those when you get into crafting wondrous items. So it's good to hang on to all that. There's a pitney landing over here, nearly dead. Help me took a blade in the gut. Now there's blood everywhere. Try to, try to find them, I did. Oh, it's just too many to stop. <laughs> Take these herbs. You know, I think they're probably passing around some herbs at Obsidian. What do you think? You think they were passing around some magical herbs no sir <laughs> we know not of what you're talking sir here we are in the wizard darson i gotta say talking about bugs and glitches i did i got this quest first time i played and i didn't come in here into this house and do this quest and just moved on and i had this quest stuck in my journal the whole game this, and I even came back here and tried to do it. wouldn't let me. I just had to live with that in my journal the whole game. <laughs> you know, for somebody that I can't stand. I don't like that stuff hanging on. You know, it's annoyed the hell out of me. Okay. Yeah, this is a good example. I want to bring your attention to this, too, if you haven't played this game before. Because this caught, this caught me by surprise. So you see that this... Uh, some pretty cool items I, sh I could make. Cloaks of elven kind. Well, I guess that's kind of stupid. Uh, belt of agility, though, would be awesome. And ring of wizardry. Okay. So you see, you got to have a leather hide. Easy to come by. Faint air essence. Diamonds. Uh, so two things I want to draw your attention to. One is that you have to have this wondrous item. It's a feat. So you have to sacrifice some kind of combat feat to get it. Uh, so that kind of stinks, but it's, I think it's worth it to have it at least on one character. But be careful what character you get it on, because you see, you have to ca be able to cast Cat's Graze or Fox's Cunning, Invisibility. Basically, it needs to be a wizard uh, or somebody that can... I tried to... Basically, I put this on a bard the first time, and I found there were certain spells I couldn't do. and it's, It can be really hard even to find the scrolls for some of this stuff. Uh, so that's something to think about. You probably want to get this on uh, a wizard. And it's a good reason to uh, keep in mind, too, the gems that you're finding. Like a di If you find a diamond or an obsidian or a fire opal, uh, you don't want to just take them to the nearest vendor and sell them because you won't be able to make these uh, cloaks and things. So instead of just selling the fire opal, for example, you could make a cloak of elven kind with the with the stuff. And it's probably be worth a, a lot more money than just selling that fire opal. But you just have to keep in mind, first time I played this, I just assumed that all the gems were for vendors. I sold them all, and then I was never able to make some stuff, because some of these are quite rare. Oh, just triggered a trap. 
So just the two things to keep in mind. One is hold on to your gems until you're sure you don't need them. Uh, amethyst. I don't know if these are used for anything. It doesn't tell you which gems are useful for crafting and which are just, you know, basically for jewelry purposes. At least not that I can tell. Ooh, there's a magical mandolin. The fush, the fuck, the fuck. <laughs> Bandore. Looks kind of like a bazooki to me. Uh, a wise and powerful bard in the moonshades named Felitar created the first of these instruments. So what does it do? All it does is cast light one use per day. So that's another good example. You might say, oh, who needs that? Sell it. But the light spell is one of those that you use for lots of the... Uh, Lots of the uh, those enchantments have you casting light on something. So it might be worth hanging on to that just in case you do have a bard that <laughs> you put the craft wondrous items on. Uh, he could actually use that to cast the uh, spells. Go ahead and rest up here. I, generally, I love the items that you can use once per day, too. So that's one use per day. So, and it casts it at level 5. So pretty, pretty good item. You don't have to worry about it using up its charges. Just rest, basically rest, and you can use it again. You hear that? It's my Yuntai heritage. Okay, so we've done that. Is there anything else to do other than just go and <laughs> help out our militia friends? I guess we'll go over there and help them out. I think we got a full crew here. You know, I honestly don't know if there's more to recruit. Oh, this is kind of cool. So you got this dying Grey Dwarf over here. Hey, go three of you officers before they took me down. And the ones I killed, they screamed one by one. Begged me to spare them. <laughs> Pleasant guy. So yeah, he's sitting there, his hands drenched in blood. He's bragging about people. He's dying. He's killed. Uh, you can try to get information. It looks like he's... It's one of the attackers. It looks like he's dying. Oh, poor dwarf. Let's try to heal him. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, and he's racist to boot. You filthy Yontai pure blood. So we got a racist, evil, gray dwarf with literally soaking in the blood of your fellow villagers. <laughs> and this guy's like wants to go get him healed up. I'm not going to heal him. I do want to harm him, but here's the rub. It will actually move your alignment to evil if you kill him. So even though I've been killing all these other dwarves, for some reason this one's special. i got to let him uh, go. Why did you attack West Arbor? Because we were told to come to search for something of silver. And we obey. <laughs> of course you have. Yeah, you, uh, go search for something silver over there. Okay. <laughs> us to slaughter your village only pleases us. So he's not going to tell us what the object of silver is. You know, in some of these ghouls writing these nasty reviews, you know, they're like, it's so cliche, the shards of power, and you've got to collect the shards. You know, how cliche. I like if, if that kind of stuff, if you hate that kind of setup, don't. You shouldn't be playing fantasy. You know, it's like somebody saying, I hate science fiction tropes like space travel. <laughs> a cliche. Like, uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, what's up with this pig? Why is there just a... This pig appears to be remarkably unaffected by the chaos surrounding it. What the hell? Did this pig kill these two? <laughs> now this this is the sort of thing I think there's some kind of inside joke here. You know, knowing Chris Avalon's involved in this, it's kind of it's kind of like at that wink wink nudge nudge. There's something about this pig. I don't know. It's not gonna tell me though. Okay, is that all? I think we are done. So let's see if we can. Who are we supposed to talk to? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Georg? Georg? 
Not to be confused with George. Come on, George. Where the hell's George? Uh, maybe I'm not far enough over. I'm supposed to go to the wheat field, right? No. Okay, I guess I've got to look at the. <laughs> actually read the quest text. <laughs> Uh, Tarmas told you to meet the others in the Starling Farm, located in the Southwest Village. Okay, I guess I'll go talk to Tarmas again, then, maybe. Somebody here must be the one. My home is the house closest to the bridge. Some equipment I have there may prove of use. Ask Georg what her orders are. Where is Georg? Georg. Oh, there's a couple torches. Uh, hope they're not glitched again. I thought Georg was over here. There he is over there. I guess he got pulled into that conflict. Uh, these thieves tools, if you're curious what those are, in this game uh, you can't just open locks without a... I think maybe you can try, but the thieves tools give you a little... Well, let's just see what explains this. Yeah, if you have open lock skill, you can use these to get a little bit of a better roll. Yeah, I forgot about that. So the, the skills, anybody can get the skill of uh, open lock. That, you don't have to be a rogue to do it. It's just the uh, rogues, you know, that's their class skill, so they can uh, get double the points. Probably wouldn't be a bad well idea if you got some extra Now we have a chance. All right, militia. Ready your weapons and move out. It's time we stand our ground. <laughs> now is the time. Okay, well, let's go fight some gray dwarves. And I, I don't know what's up with this flickering thing where, you know, suddenly you appear 10 feet away. It's like you got lag. It's like a lag effect, even though it's a single player. It's not online at all. <laughs> Still getting that weird lag. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, let's see. Do I talk to Georg again? Man, this is like... Where is Georg? It's like, where's Waldo? But <laughs> where is this guy? Hey there. Okay, there we go. You know, I have had it. Uh, it's a couple times where the NPC or the character I'm supposed to talk to just isn't there. I have to reload, suddenly they pop back up. And I think another consistent bug I had was uh, sometimes the game would just freeze on a cutscene. Or I wouldn't be able to get out of the zone. You're just like, what is going on? I can't move on. And what was happening, if you go into your save folder, you have to go into your save game folder and these, these little dot .ROS files. I don't know what that stands for. Uh, but different characters have those. So basically what happens, occasionally you run into this character, they got a little pre-scripted dialogue. But uh, if that file is not in your save folder, I guess it just keeps looking for it, doesn't find it, the game freezes. Somehow those files get deleted sometimes. Uh, who knows why, just another of the many bugs and glitches. But thankfully, you can go into the uh, one of your earlier save folders and just copy it, paste it back in. Again, don't know why, but at least there's a fix for it, so you don't just have to reload, you know, all the way back to the beginning. So just a little trick. If that happens to you, just remember you go into your original, go into like an old, uh, your start save folder, copy, paste it in, you'll be good to go. Okay, let's see what we got. A bunch of uh, blade links, gray dwarves. Man, look at all that. So this is probably be a good time to actually use some of my abilities. So let's see, we got Entangle. It kind of bugs me it doesn't tell you what Entangle does, but I'm pretty sure that's just hold them in place. I don't know if it does anything else, but we can try it out. Okay, boom. That worked. Let's go over there and let's see, what you've got. Let's see if we can put them in the dark, too. we got Charm Person. Now, I thought, you know, back in the day, that would actually make them your ally. They'd fight for you. But I'm pretty sure in these new rules, it just, or at least in this game, all it does is make them not fight. Try to make them run away. We don't want to do that. We just want to kill. I'll tell you what. Let's just kill, though, because if I use anything else, then they'll get an attack of opportunity on me. Don't want that. 
You know, we could try out this parry. You want to try out the parry mode? So I got somebody attacking me. Let's just try it out. Let's see, did it even work? It's not, it's not lit up. Here we go. Parry mode activated. So in theory, parry failure. Let's see. Is it ever? There it succeeded that time. So yeah, they just uh, he gets a a repost, repost. How do you say that? It might be kind of fun if you had that leveled up enough. Maybe it would be better than a straight up attack. But you know what? <laughs> I'd rather just attack. Okay, it's two down. 18 XP each. Oh, this guy's almost dead. I wonder if I could have healed these guys up a little bit first. Might have been a good play. Still got my moss. I wonder if I could... Doesn't look like I can use it. You know, another problem with this game, it doesn't automatically get rid of items. So even if you use a quest item, sometimes it just hangs out in your inventory. I won't let you sell it Another sometimes. wave is coming! Prepare for battle! It probably should just automatically disappear, but it just doesn't work. Let's see what you... Okay, let's... I think, like I said, I'm pretty sure these guys can see in the dark anyway, but let's just try our dark spell on them. Bring it yeah, they get an attack of opportunity, so you do have to... Probably be better to cast that before you get over to them. Why can't I attack? I guess they're a little too close. So darkness only lasts for six seconds at level one. That's why it's just almost worthless to cast. But, again, if I get level two, I'll be casting as a level two. I think you get so many extra seconds per level. You're not 100 percent sure. Regroup. All right, first wave done. We'll just get through this little opening bit here, and then we'll switch to. Cyrix blood. They're entering the Starling House. But if we don't hold the next wave off, the whole village could be overrun. Let's go. If we hurry, we can stop them before they find the children. The children. There is a good choice. You know, it doesn't really make any difference, which is again what people criticize us for. But. We either stay here and keep fighting, let let them go into the house, or we can uh, go into the house, try to save the kids, and let leave these guys out here to fight. I don't know if it really makes any difference. <laughs> I'll go see what I can. We find could use your room. sword, but I understand. You keep my brother and sister from harm, and you can have anything you want. Yes, please loot my house. <laughs> okay, kind of weak. So we got Red of Starling over here. I guess that's his mom. Neville, Mateo, thank the gods you're here. Mother, what happened? Where are those dwarves that came in here? So the children are in there. I actually like the. I like his brother and sister better than I do him. I wish we could just take them instead. <laughs> uh, anyway, they're locked up. And I guess the choice is uh, do you want to let the dogs in there? A little company couldn't hurt. And let's open the door and set the dogs loose. Just be quiet. They could be listening to us. I'm not sure what the best option here is. Eh, I guess to try to be quiet. Nasher, mutton shop, lock. Come on, boys. And you know the sign. You'll learn the significance of those names later. There we go. What do we got in here? Shout the. This is exploration mode, okay. So we got six. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Nice little passel of gray dwarves. Some of them are casting spells. See, he's running, chasing after this guy, getting attacks of opportunity all over the place. <laughs> okay. That's why you really gotta have tumble. See, there's just no option just to say attack nearest and don't run away. <laughs> Until it's dead. <laughs> yeah, he's just standing there. Ugh. It'd be kind of cool if you could say attack this guy, then go attack that guy. But it doesn't work like that. Yeah, just out of curiosity, what would happen? So he's just going to run over and attack him. Oh, and they actually knocked Bevel unconscious. So you might think, oh, that's better reload, but just just hold on. He'll just pop back up as normal. 
Same when he doesn't kill me, I'm down to five health. Whew, a little bit close. So if you just wait after a battle for a few seconds, he'll pop back up. And there's no like broken bones or any any debuffs on him. All we gotta do is rest and he'll be back to full charge. Now I think if you play on the hardcore rules, then I'm pretty sure at that point you'd have to uh you know to be a little bit more involved, but <laughs> yeah, I just rescued your family, gonna grab your your family savings, your lifetime savings there. Now check out these kids though. Yay, Mateo! We heard them screaming for mercy as they died. Is there any blood? Can we see? <laughs> so, the, the kids are... I like these better than Bubble. Can we just take him instead of Bubble? I see the dogs are probably... Sure. <laughs> sure is. The dogs are probably feeding on the bodies right now. <laughs> Yay! The hounds have bones for months. <laughs> this isn't some kind of game, you all. Be quiet. Oh, shut up. Yeah, exactly. Shut your mouth, Bevel. You dumb ox. <laughs> you ungrateful little... <laughs> we could always say the Durger got them. They'd probably make me evil just for saying that. Uh, shut the door, lock it, and yell if you hear any more of them. We promise. I like your spunk, kid. So that's locked. So I don't have open lock, I guess I... Well, I guess if you don't put a point into it, you can't even try. And if I bash it, unfortunately, oh, it's going to also damage whatever's in there. It's kind of a trade-off. At least yeah. I'll be able to get the gold. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, can I yes, have him indeed. assist with this, I wonder? Oh, too late. Yes, he broke an item. Well, at least I got that gem. And I should get a little reward. A little XP bonus. Maybe get some more. Thank the gods! Oh, looks like that's it. Okay, there's a little side quest done. I'm pretty sure I got some XP for doing that. Love that rattle. I don't know if I'm going to love it after I've heard it 10,000 times, but... <laughs> <laughs> For now, it's pretty cool. Okay, let's get back into the into the mix here. Strategy mode. Okay, I guess that is sort of nice. Just, I wish I could just move that camera a little bit up. As good as we get. This is a ferocious battle. I wonder if causing fear would help at all. If I do cast it, though, it's going to... Everybody's going to get an attack of opportunity on me. So probably better just to fight it out. Until I get my concentration and tumble up a little more. And actually, I'm not sure if tumble helps unless you're specifically moving away. Oh, Bevel. You are being so helpful, Bevel. Look at how helpful he's being. <laughs> he's really... You know, rubbing his shins against that rock there. That's that's he's pulling his weight. There might be some pathfinding mods. I didn't even look for that, but that is one of the hardest things I think. Is you know, if you ever try to design Thank something the like this. Thank God that's over. We would not have held them much longer. <laughs> yeah, spoke too soon, didn't you? It's okay. Suddenly, here's Dagan. Stepdad. Much blood has been lost tonight. Let us make the enemy pay in kind. Where have you been all this time, Dagan? I guess he had to go get his quiver. And his buddies. Mm -hmm. ah, that's it for you. Take that. You know what I would kind of like to do before I get into the fray? Let's try our cause fear just to just see what happens. Cause fear. It's kind of hard sometimes to see what you're targeting. Alright, so he just runs off, that's all that does. 
I guess that might be useful if you were more of a spellcaster type and want to get somebody away from you. What the hell? <sighs> Man. You know, sometimes I think you just would be better off just putting them in puppet mode and just manually doing everything. We could try that out. So we're just going to turn the AI, AI completely off. And then I should get a little bit more control over him. Go over there and try to knock that guy down, maybe. We've got company over here. And yeah, see, so we knocked him down. So once they get knocked down, not only can they not attack, but it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to hit them. I don't think it's the one-shot deal. Not down hit. That is the last of them. For now, gather the wounded and the dying. Let's see how many we can steal from death's clutches. So there you go. That's basically the prologue. Get a little bit of an exposition here. Thank the gods we were able to hold them at the farm. How many did we lose? Ian, Vera, Pearson. What were those things, anyhow? Never seen anything quite like them. They're called bladelings. Their kind is rarely seen in our realm. They dwell in a place beyond. Well then, what in the nine hells are they doing here? Lathander doesn't illuminate all mysteries for me. We must rely on our own wit and resources. One of those dwarves mentioned they were searching for something. Does anybody know what it was? Boy, come over here. Boy! I see you're unharmed. Many have not been so fortunate, and others have seen their final night. I understand you lost a friend of yours in the attack. A tragedy. She was a promising young mage. Or so I've been told. I think it would have been more tragic if she... <laughs> <laughs> I had to kick that wizard's butt. But anyway, uh, let's see. The entire attack was a tragedy. She's a good friend. So this is the thing with your stepdad. He's kind of this hard-ass, cold, unsentimental type. So I think you're actually better talking to him gruffly. So if I just say, I'll get over it, he's got a better reaction than if I tried something else. That you will. I see you understand the folly of dwelling upon loss. Yeah. I do not have much time to talk. There are many who are wounded. Now, there is something you must do tonight. Those bladelings were here to find something, and I fear I know what. Hmm, it's almost like a, guff a MacGuffin. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we got the shards. We gotta go get this other shard, blah, blah, blah. What were they looking for? What do I need to do? Very good. This is not a night for words, but action. Like there is response. an item, a silver shard. Long ago, I concealed it in the old stones outside of town. I fear it may have drawn these creatures down upon us. So, they stored it outside of town, but somehow they were drawn to the town. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, it might, might actually be a clever little plot device, a little clue, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, anyway, let's see. What do we need to do? The stones outside of town are older and deeper than you may think. In the farthest chamber of these ruins, look for a strong box. Inside is the shard. It's a good thing nobody's ever been there to, <laughs> to look at that strong box. Can you give me anything for the gin? Eh! Sounds... There remains only one thing. You should not go alone. Bevel? I need ah, you to accompany my son to the Bravo. ruins. This is an important task. But Georg says the ruins have been overrun instead. by lizardling tribes. And that is why you must go. Together, two can succeed where one might fail. The cries of the wounded cannot be ignored any longer. Find the shard. Find it and bring it here. Yes, bring this whiny... This no offense, men, <laughs> but your father makes the hairs on my neck stand up. Still, if we're going to do this, we should make some haste. It sounds urgent. Yes, thank you for that. This path that runs along the river is our best route into the swamp. I hope these ruins aren't too hard to find. We could be out there all uh, night. Bevel, I did grow up here too, you know. <laughs> Remember that swamp we used to play together? It's been an age since I've come this far into the swamp. There are some twists and turns before we get to the ruins. There's probably more than lizardlings ahead. So, uh, lead on, I guess. 
Uh, yeah, so you see the setup there. Not too hard to see the path that we're going to be following. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to stop here, and then I'll load some of my later sets so you can see what some of the more advanced uh, combat looks like. But I think that gives you a pretty good taste of what you can expect from the first old, uh, half hour to an hour or so. All right, so this is where we I first got to Neverwinter, the town, or the city, I guess I should say. All my characters, you get a good look at it. It's kind of a. Uh, it'll be interesting to bring up the original game and compare what the buildings look like. But this is the docks district, and the way they did it this in this game, they they tightly restrict where you can go, so you kind of have to do each district one at a time. Uh, later on, you'll be able to go wherever, but they. I guess they didn't want you to be able to explore the whole city right away. Uh, you can see there's not... Remember in the first game, there were just barrels and crates, boxes, chests, just everywhere. So it's like hard to do anything if, if you're like me and you have to click on everything. They did away with it, that, for this game. And the same thing with the houses. You can't really go into any of the houses. There's just a few... So I guess for some people that feels really limiting. They like to be able to go into all the houses even if there's not much in there and open up all the chests and so on. But I kind of like this. It kind of keeps you from getting overwhelmed. Kind of have more of a sense of purpose this way. Besides that, in real life, it's not like you're going to be going door to door. So there's the, uh, the sunken flagon where our uncle works. You notice too, I picked up some other party members. Uh, so we've, here we've I'm got uh, Alane, or Elaine, not quite sure how to pronounce that. She is a, a druid. Let's see, yeah. And the druids, are she's actually pretty good. I like her. Some people apparently find her annoying, but you know, she's got some good spells. She's, you know, a druid, it's kind of like a fighting, sort of like a cross, I guess, between a cleric and a, a ranger, maybe. Uh, somewhere in there. Uh, she's all right. I gave her a bow. Keep her out of Oh, she still got her sickle here, but later on I gave her a bow. Yes. Uh, then we have Nishka, our tiefling rogue. And again, now, you know, I don't know why it seemed like everybody's so negative about all these characters, like they didn't like her either. I, I think she's great. She's fun. I was hoping to, uh, you know, do the romance. I think you get some romance options. I was able to get the romance option with the druid here. <laughs> I was really had my eyes on uh, Nishka, though. For some reason wasn't successful there. Not sure what's going on. But anyway, she is a rogue, so she'll be really useful to have around to open the locks, disarm the traps, and so on. Uh, she's got a rapier. Yes. And then we had the shield dwarf. And again, people were complaining. They're like, oh, he's just the stereotypical dwarf. He loves ale, and he's got a beard. You know, I hear people complaining about something like that. I, I really just think they're in the wrong <laughs> genre. <laughs> you know, what do they want? I mean... What was it, Dragon Age, where they had the shaved beards that weren't speaking with Scottish accents? And, you know, that's, is that supposed to be better somehow? You know, I like the uh, the traditional dwarves just fine. But they gave him a tower shield, and of course he's got his uh, dwarven war axe. Now, one of the problems that you run into, with this guy especially, so, you know, he's set up to, to have this dwarven war axe, and you take feats and, like, weapon-focused dwarven war axe, uh, so basically you're specializing in this one type of weapon. So again, it sucks if you find like a regular war axe that's way better than this dwarven war axe because suddenly you got this useless feat now if you switch to that. And they even have a quest chain, a little bit of a spoiler alert here, uh, where he ends up with a war hammer. So if you've really spent all this time developing war axe, suddenly you're, you're supposed to go with his hammer instead, just kind of mess weird. And on top of all of that, he's, he wants to become a monk. And, you know, the monks, I don't think they fight with any weapons, or they have, like, these gloves they fight with. So I don't know what they were thinking. You know, it's, sometimes it's almost better just not to specialize, not to pick any of these weapon proficiencies, because you never know what you're going to find. But, How can and I again, help? that's some of the best feats, so it's a bit of a trade-off, I suppose. I am listening. Well, anyway, that's what that looks like. I, I did want to show you the uh, one of the caves, because that's usually what I like to explore the most. I gotta see a dwarven cave or somewhere. I like that it gives you a little screenshot so you can see uh, 
Let's see. Orc Cavern. Let's try that out. Level 10 at this point, looks like. So this would be well into the game, but there's quite a few of these little dungeons you can explore. You know, it's not like one of those games where there's just hundreds of places to go and you can see all this little stuff. You know, like a pillar or a, yeah, Pillars of Two or something. Uh, here, there's it really is a little bit more linear. I mean, it's not totally linear, but it doesn't have that that feeling of just like a, something like Skyrim, where there's just almost it just feels like this endless number of places to go and things to see. Uh, here again, a lot more constrained. Feels more like one of the older games. Again, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'd rather have a few carefully crafted dungeons than just hundreds of uh, little time waster dungeons or look-alike dungeons. Uh, so just up against some good old-fashioned orcs. My initiative roll of a five. <laughs> uh, so you can see, yeah, after this I'll show you what the crafting system looks like. It's got plenty of items. I think he's, yeah, Astral Blade plus one. Does a little bit of sonic damage bonus. Got a hat. You know, this is one of the things with D&D. &D. I, I never liked when they started limiting your items. Like just a, a armor. An armor slot? Are you kidding? Just one slot for armor? <laughs> Give me a break, man. I want to have like a ch legs and chest and, you know, the full... The f I guess I got boots, but... I mean, this isn't as bad as... I've seen some games where all you have is like an armor slot. Maybe a ring if you're lucky and a weapon. Uh, you know, I like to have lots of uh, ways to, to gear up. Anyway, get you two rings on neck. This is all just standard uh, standard rules. Anyway, let's, let's see what we can do. So now that we got more characters, you can really get more fine grained here. We got more uh, tactical stuff you can pull off. Let's see. Try the strategy mode so it's like she's got lots of spells we can have her summon something to a lightning storm and I'm pretty sure that she doesn't have to be outdoors to do this you know, sometimes they'll limit you with these kind of spells just uh, get everything going and you can really see you know what what's going on there why can't you cast that for some reason it doesn't want to let me cast my Maybe it does have to be outside. Bolts of lightning. Evocation. Does it? Oh, it's centered on me. I see. Yeah, so it, I have to. I can only cast it to my. I have to get into the melee a little bit. And get a concentration. <laughs> I have to give him a chance to get an opportunity attack on me, I guess. Betrayer. Uh, then we have this uh, paladin. He's got bless weapon. Probably be better to do this stuff before you get into combat, so you don't have to, uh, you know, suffer those attacks of opportunity. Well, look who showed up. And if you really wanted to micromanage, you could have put her in stealth mode and then have her come in and get her sneak attack as a rogue. Well, let's see. At least she'll get to call the lightning. That's pretty impressive. I'll show you. I'll go to one of my late, late games so you can really just see when it, everything just lights up as like a fireworks show. <laughs> when you get lots of spellcasters going. It's really exciting to me when you send your, you know, big group of, yeah, and everybody's casting, got all this stuff going on. Like a one-man raid. Oh, oh. One more orc. Never get tired of killing orcs. And, and yes, unfortunately, there's no rat battles. You know, I noticed that in Neverwinter Nights. It's like these guys got this. It's like they got this. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, uh, burn under their saddle or something about putting rats in games. Like they're too good. That's like too cliche. <laughs> we, can have the, we can have the ale swelling bearded. Dwarf with the Scottish accent, but you know, it would just be a uh, bridge too far to put a damn rat in there for me to kill <laughs> So I, I don't like that You know, I think just if nothing else just kind of as an homage to fantasy role-playing you should start off every game with a, a, a Mission where you're going to a tavern cellar, you know killing a rat or two You know that ought to be I think 
not having that just kind of ruins the whole game for me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there's a... What the hell is that guy? Another little glitch there with the animation. He just kind of was sliding in. Maybe he's got roller skates on. Maybe this is a slick surface. Oh, there's that great cleave kicking in. See that? So with that, you just... Great cleave. I have to be confused with the great cleave. The great cleave, the guy. <laughs> this is just the great cleave, the ability. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, that's kind of what these uh, dungeons look like. And, you know, somehow, it's it's sort of got that, to me, it sort of feels a little bit like the old Baldur's Gates. You know, I guess being able to spin around and everything is in some ways better, though. I gotta say, I don't know, how much do you really think it adds to the immersion being able to control the cameras? I mean, I understand why even in some of the later games, they just fix the perspective so that they could really, you know, work with the artist to get just the right perspective on these, uh, you know, on these underground caverns and such. You know, I think probably, I gotta say, I, I probably do just like the fixed perspectives for that reason. You know, because again, with this, you're kind of always like, what, huh? <laughs> you know, just, you can't ever, whoa, and then, you know. <laughs> it's like you're doing, spending most of the game doing that. Uh, whereas, yes, if it was fixed perspective, okay, you might not be able to always see every part like you would like. But uh, on the other hand, they, unless it's a really sh <laughs> crappy <laughs> uh, artist in charge there, uh, they're going to set you up with a pretty good perspective where you can see what you need to see keep everything looking good and have a little bit more uh, artistic control over it uh, but yeah there's a dungeon let's go to uh the somewhere we can craft probably one of the why don't i just go to one of the last uh, saves i got here probably a little bit of spoilers here <laughs> uh bridge done oh yeah sometimes you want to save in multiple spots even during a battle i found Save, mansion, arena, come on, where's, somewhere here I gotta have a save inside my keep. One second here, I think. I think this will be the best place. You see how many saved games I had, just because I got tired of having to <coughs> reload and redo things. Especially with crafting, because what you find sometimes, unless you are good about taking notes of what you'll need, and sometimes you go buy the mats you need, then get back and find out, hey, I forgot to get something. So to craft, we need to go to a crafting bench. And unfortunately, those are far and few between. You do have one in your keep that you can use. That's probably more convenient than... I don't know why I went back so far. I don't even think I told you about the keep, but... <laughs> you know, spo again, spoiler alert. You probably didn't see this one coming, right? But eventually, you get a stronghold of your own. And it's got uh, your crafting stations in there. But this has got to be the, probably the clunkiest part of this interface. You know, it always it seems like nine times out of ten, a crafting system in games like this just feels tacked on and poorly thought out interface-wise. and It's just more of a pain than it's worth. So that's usually why I don't even... Everybody gets all excited when these Kickstarter campaigns launch, and they're like, yeah, if we hit this stretch goal, we'll add a crafting system. And I'm like, you know, how about a stretch goal not to include the damn thing? Because uh, you're, so, you're saying it's an afterthought already by making it a stretch goal. Uh, strike one. And then strike two is probably going to be poorly implemented and just be this, this big pain. So that's basically what we have here. So for whatever reason, they thought they'd give you three different benches. One for alchemy, one for magician, one for blacksmith. And if I want to make something, if you want to craft armor or weapons, you have to have these molds. And you can open this up and see what it takes. You get, 
three metal ingots and you think oh that's pretty cool but you got to be three of the same kind and I don't think I've got uh, <laughs> three metal ingots so you kind of have to keep an eye out to buy those later on you can get some ingots from your uh, mines but that's way far let's see if I can make anything here uh, so I can't make this leather armor but all I got is just regular wooden planks. That's not going to be anything good. You just check to see if anybody's got listening. anything better than just regular mats. Yes. I am listening. Uh, sure. It doesn't look yes. like it. But if I had, say, some... Uh... Where's he going? If I had some adamantite or something, I might be able to make uh, some better armor. But let's go ahead and make something. I went to this much trouble, right? This is leather armor, it just takes three leather hides. So you pop that in, you pop that in. Then you use your smith hammer on it. To where you can click on it. Bada boom. You have failed! You don't have enough ranks in craft armor. Okay, so here we go. Back to ranting mode. True, he only has two points, but. Yes. How can I help? She's got four Everyone points. Me. Sure. Yes. She's got four points. Or she yes. does. But it won't just assume. It won't let her assist me or anything. No, I gotta go take her all the way in there. <laughs> this is fun. And you might wonder, why don't she just follow you in there? You do have her set to follow you closely. That's a good question, Matt. <laughs> a very good question. <laughs> How about that, Obsidian? Okay, so we're back. So now I have to what? What is give it? her the hammer. Yes. Yeah, let's see if she can do it. Crafting succeeded! Yay! So there we go. So that's just a straight, just regular old leather armor. Uh, about the only positive thing there is I could sell this probably for more than I could have just sold the mats for. But I lost the mold. Just a little bit strange. I think a mold. Okay. But uh, anyway, yeah, I lost the mold. And I guess you have to break the mold to make leather armor. Still trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but again, if you had some fancier hides and your skill was up enough, you'd be able to make something special. Now, with the other feats, you have to use this alchemy bench. To get the, uh, well, I mean, I think the alchemy system's a little bit better thought out than this. Get in step. So if I come back to this menu, you can see I got like dire wolf tooth. So if I get four ranks in alchemy, which I've only got two ranks yes. on him. She's got two. Help? She's got four. Yeah. Here. Sure. Yes. So I can give Nishka this uh, dire wolf horn and my mortar and How pestle, right? So I. Activate the pestle on the dire wolf tooth and get the faint water essence. Now, what I like about this system, though, is sometimes you'll have a recipe that says you need to have. Uh, well, these are faints, but sometimes it'll say weak, or glowing, or radiant. So what you can do with that is, if you have two of these faint water essences, you could put both of them inside the alchemy bench, use the mortar and pestle on the bench, and it will. I guess sort of combine those into the uh, next level up. Or you could go the other way down and break a big one down into smaller pieces. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. That's nice. Uh, the only problem with the alchemy though, is, again, you have to be able to cast spells uh, to make some of this stuff. Oh, these are the enchantments. Never mind. I, I think alchemy... What? what is it? I'm pretty sure you don't need to uh, cast spells to use it. No, it's just you have to have these ingredients. Uh, Quicksilver, Belladonna. Not sure if I got enough to Quicksilver. I guess we could make a potion quick just to show you. Use mortar and pestle on an alchemy workbench containing the above. How can I help? Okay. Alchemy bench. Powdered silver, boom. Belladonna, boom. Activate the item. Crafting fail, not a valid recipe. Uh, to get the wrong. Yeah, maybe yes. quick silver came back. <laughs> you know, I literally spent hours doing this. I don't know what's wrong with me. 
There you go. There's our Tanglefoot bag. So, you know, I didn't really get into this part, but, you know, there's some pretty cool grenades you could make. So you could really uh, go all out with that. I don't know if you could make healing kits. You can see there's some, like, the wands and stuff. You know, the really cool thing about use magic item, if you get it up high enough... Yeah, she's got it up to nine. So eventually you can even use... This involves using items that are typically restricted to a certain race. Emulate a class. So you, sometimes you find these items, right, in these games, and it'll say, usable only by monks. Or usable only by good characters. And you're like, damn, that's be such a great item. I wish I could use it. Well, if you get the use magic device up high enough, you can actually bypass uh, those uh, restrictions. I think that is really cool. Uh, I love that. Gives you a really good reason to get magic device. I am listening. What? Okay, what so it? I think we're just about done here, really. Let's look at one of the very late battles. Not the very last battle. <laughs> Might be a little bit too many spoilers. <laughs> uh, you know what we could do? Let's look at the uh, look at this last dance. So you got the keep. I told you about this. You get your own stronghold, your own castle. And that's awesome in and of itself, but it gets kind of attacked a couple times and you have to defend it. And those are some of the more fun battles. So now you can see I got some more characters under my control. Now the, I know you're probably thinking, what, I got one, two, three, four, four characters. There is a mod you can get that bumps this up. I think you can do five, maybe even six characters. I don't usually like to go with that mod at least definitely not on the first game play first time through the game i, I think it kind of might screw with the the balance a little bit too much you know you, the last thing you'd want to do is make it so easy where you're just blasting through everything uh but it is annoying at the start because you have all these characters and they have their sub quests and things and uh, you're so limited i think you can only have maybe three characters for a good chunk of the game that's just too few. It would be nice to have at least five at all times. Uh, so I can see that. I mean, not necessarily because for combat reasons, just to get those side quests. You don't always want to have to choose, right? And another thing that people uh, hated about this game was that a lot of times it sticks you with a character. Uh, like it'll say, you have to have Jave in your class. And she is one of the most annoying characters. Make your path mine. Her dialogue, is she's always saying, no know that the knowing of the no knowledge no that the knowing of the knowledge you must know it's like you got this weird emphasis about no it just i mean drives me insane she keeps saying it every line of dialogue has that no that yeah i'll just talk to her so you can see what i'm talking about <laughs> what what is it uh where is she uh, yeah talk to her what is your will Tell me more about the ritual. The ritual of purification was the means by which the Empire of Ilfarn sought to protect itself from that which was supposed to protect it. It may seem to be a reason that feeds on itself, but such an act was believed necessary. The ritual of purification was a safety ward. Ilfarn had many enemies, and to defend against these enemies, they created a powerful construct, a guardian. Their wisdom mirrored their power. They recognized that they would need means of protecting themselves should the Guardian turn on them. So, you know, I tell you about her saying no, <laughs> like every line of dialogue. <laughs> Naturally, when I try to show you, it's like I'm picking probably the, the one thing in the whole game where she doesn't say it. I will hear you. Let's see if we can get her to say it. If this shard of yours is inside me, why don't you tear it out of me? The Kalasha, what does it again? <laughs> that is not unknown to me, nor is it a surprise. A Gidzerai is one of the people. Know that many lifetimes would go by before I recited but one of the annals of our people. If it is your will that you would know more, narrow your question and I shall answer. <laughs> so that's what you're dealing with. And believe me, she says it enough times where you're just like, God, I don't care if she's awesome cleric. Gotta get her out of the party. What's going on? Oh, this character though. <laughs> Uh, I got so many problems with her. 
chaotic neutral. For one, she's just super annoying, even at the very beginning of the game. Uh, I didn't even want to have her in my party. You know, I guess I could have tried not even to, to, to rescue her, but this idea of being a sorcerer kind of bugs me in general. And that's not limited to this game, but, you know, I always liked the idea. Uh, you know, I, I grew up reading, like, uh, Dragonlance, Forgotten Realms books, and, like, I remember Race, the character Raceland. You know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this might be boring, but if you do, I'm sure you remember Raceland from the Dragonlance books. You know, the idea was it was really hard to learn. You really had to study. I mean, it took, like, not just mentally, but physical toil on you uh, to learn this magic. You know, it wasn't something just anybody could do. You basically had to be a genius intellect-wise, intellect but it would weaken you learning all this magic. You know, it was this really, you know, serious undertaking. I, I could, I could kind of relate to that. You know, as an academic, right? You, you have to study hard. <laughs> you know, you have to basically earn uh, this knowledge. And, you know, this idea of a sorcerer, just, oh, I just have natural talent. You know, I don't need those stupid books. You know, there's a fireball. There's a magic missile or whatever. You know, super powerful. Didn't have to earn any of this. You know, it just kind of chafes. I, I don't like that whole idea. Uh, much less that it's all about charisma. Which is basically saying, you know, if you look good, uh, you can you can catch the <laughs> fireball. <laughs> you don't have to do all that study. If you, if you got to look, if you look good, you know, go ahead. Uh, it bugs me. I don't I don't like the class, but just her is just her as a character is annoying. And I got to say, again, spoiler alert. Uh, this is a big, pretty big spoiler, so you might want to skip ahead a little bit if you're concerned about that. But uh, the, the, the end of the game, no matter what you do, I guess some of the characters will stay true to you, loyal to you, but some are going to uh, turn on you. And when she turned on me, I was so happy. <laughs> it's just like, now finally I get to kill her. <laughs> of course, she killed me several times because I didn't know that was going to happen. I said to, you know, go in, get rid of her spells before the battle. But, but anyway, that's a different story. Uh, but it still did not diminish my enthusiasm with which I was able to dispatch this sorcerer. Okay, uh, anyway, let's see if we can get into battle here. Yeah, here's my keep, and that's one of the mechanics, you know, you sure, can uh, yes. upgrade this. No surprises there. Get all kinds of uh, better walls. You can build a little merchant to come in. You can be just like, um, you know, in, in Dragon Age, all those other games have the same concept. See to fortifying the keep. There we go. Ready to stand. Oh, I guess I gotta go talk to. Gotta figure out where Amanjiro went. I don't want to spoil that part of it. But let's just get this battle started so you can. <laughs> All I want to do is show you an epic battle. <laughs> You know, I gotta fight with a dragon. I'll save before that. Maybe I'll go there just so. That's a pretty good battle. Where's that dragon? Yeah, right there. I think I actually get to fight two dragons here. But I think they did a really good job with the all the particle effects and everything. Okay, I think I gotta break bash that. All fun and games. Here we go. Let us grant it sleep at last. No being should be forced to suffer like that. <laughs> Anything to get it to be silent. <laughs> Hurry. Other beings may be drawn to the crystal as we speak. I love a good dragon fight. And, you know, this game does it right. You know, I hated that bit in Skyrim where you basically defeat a dragon in, like, five minutes into the game. You know, it's just, ugh, so un... It's, I hate that. <laughs> you know, I should be fighting little rats and stuff for a long time before I get to take on anything like a dragon. So, really, by this point in the game, you've been playing for a long time. You're really looking for a, you know, a good challenge. And, and you get one here. <laughs> Back, dragon, we faced your kind before. 
That's kind of cool, too. You get these history These dragons pieces. have only rage in their eyes. Words will not avail us here. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I prefer killing dragons in Paris. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you really get to see what a big the battle, battle looks like. On! Uh, some of the characters will do their thing. There they go. I suppose I could say I don't know what he's doing. Room. I guess the yeah, AI is Dog messed up again. He's just gonna stand there. <laughs> but really, it's not polite. <laughs> well, look at all the toys I got to play with. Hard wilting, incendiary cloud. He could summon the. This is. I love this. He could summon the sword to fight for him. I just like Sand as a character too. I guess he got knocked down or something. What happened to my spell? that sword up there. There we go. So check that out. <laughs> I don't know if it'll automatically attack or not. Yeah, we got all kinds of protective stuff. Uh, haste. I think I've already got my people hasted. Lightning bolts. Greater stone skin. Finger of death. Probably won't work, but hard wilting. Try that out. More have come to block She's our already path. casting Animate Dead. She's trying to summon a skeleton. Then I have her casting Chain Lightning. So yeah, let's just back up a little bit. So look at all the stuff I got going on here. <laughs> I just love that. Of course, these dragons. He's almost dead, too. Oh, I dragged him out of the range of the... I guess he was smart enough to get out of these uh, spinning swords. However, I should probably quaff a pot here. So I think at this point... Yeah, so what I've done here, I've started off with Fighter, but then I switched to Weapon Master, which is one of the prestige classes you can get uh, once you meet all the requirements. So I wasn't super happy with it, but, you know, it gets the job done. I'm going to run over there and kill that dragon now. Almost dead. That's just too much magic, isn't it? So unfortunately, he <laughs> looks like he's glitched. <laughs> so he is dead, but he's just kind of staying there. Okay. The other one's lying down. Properly dead. So pretty cool. I guess it wasn't that hard. You know, I got so much firepower here. I really br brought out all my heavy artillery, the sorcerer, and the wizard, you know, and the cleric. Yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this bishop guy, he's chaotic evil, so you can guess which way he's going to go towards in the uh, end battle. You know, sometimes sure, it's fun yes. just to mix up the characters to see what kind of dialogues they, they get. But anyway, there you go. I think that's probably about everything you I could show you. Uh, that would be interesting. Yeah, I don't want to show you my uh, last battle. There are a couple of puzzles in here that are pretty cool, too. Some are relatively difficult, too. It's not like uh, some of the... It's not like Bard's Tell where there's all those puzzle chests everywhere. Um, but there's definitely some uh, some pretty good logic puzzles. But, you know, that's just kind of a minor aspect of the game. So anyway, what do we want to give this uh, give this game overall? What do we think of it? Is it worth is it worth the money? You know, and again, the you know the big thing everybody says is they they don't like the original campaign. They say just go play Mask of the Betrayer, uh, which picks up I think at level fifteen or level eighteen characters. You know, I wouldn't go that far. I think that. Yeah, sure, it's got a few uh, problems, but I think the original campaign is plenty fun. I didn't ever feel like I was just wasting my time playing it. Uh, it doesn't really bother me so much that the there's these cutscenes that are showing you bosses basically having conversations. You're not there. To, there's no way your character could know what was going on. You know, I get that. Uh, it is a little annoying that sometimes they force you to have characters in your party that you may not like. You know, okay... <laughs> You know, all those issues aside, though, you know, for 20, you get this on GOG, it's 20 bucks, you get the original campaign, you get those two expansions. You know, I don't see how you can go wrong with that. Uh, you definitely want to install those patches, make the smooth out the animation to get the, uh, 
you know, all these menus where you can see them clearly. Uh, a lot of the problems with this What's game were on? also there in Neverwinter Nights 2. And I like some, I think they actually improved upon, uh, you know, I'd probably go so far as to say there's more improvements I like more than there's, you know, steps backwards. Yeah, here's this empower spell I was telling you about. So if we go to, I don't have sand on my party at the moment, but, you know, you can see if you click on, just quick click on empower, and you can see how these, uh, you know, these spells, I think empower doubles the damage or does more damage or something. <laughs> exactly what it does. But I can tell you. Let's see, feats, uh, empower spell. All variable numeric effects of an empowered spell are increased by 50%. For example, an empowered magic missile deals one and one half times normal damage. 1d4 plus 1 multiplied by 1.5. So this is pretty cool. You know, this is obviously something from the, the official rule set. But I like the way this is implemented. It's you know it's easy to you know go over there, click in power. Uh, with the wizard, you know, you just have the different slots. You take up one of your six level slots, let's say, to get the uh, powerful version of the spell. Uh, but I like that because it kind of gives you a little more control. Uh, for one thing, it keeps these, you know, weak spells more relevant later. So you don't just never cast it again. You know, you could cast it as an empowered spell and still do uh, pretty good damage. Uh, but, uh, you know, I like anything like that. It makes the magic system more interesting. Uh, it doesn't just mean, you you know, once you get the new level, you get the new spells. You never go back and cast any of your old spells again. Uh, nothing like that. Yes. I think she's got the same thing, too. Yeah, so she's got, like, silent spells and empowered spells. You know, it's something I didn't know until this morning. But there are certain spells in here. And I don't... Not sure which one that is. It's, is it somatic? I'm just looking here at the components. Yeah, here we go. So if it just says verbal... Then those spells, I guess there's surely there's more than just the one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if it's just got a verbal component, uh, you can cast it, doesn't matter if you're wearing armor. So you get out like the heaviest armor you can get in the game and still cast those spells without any penalties. And I didn't know that, I guess there's not that many. Uh, but if you really had your heart set on some kind of a warrior mage or magic user melee character. And if you focus on those kind of spells, you know, you could be wearing plate mail and be fine. I think that's kind of cool. And so, you know, I, I like the idea that there's still stuff about this game. Uh, I didn't know. I'm still learning stuff. Uh, so I love that aspect of it. Uh, anyway, let's uh, break this down. Uh, is it worth 20 bucks? Absolutely. And I had even got into Mask of the Betrayer. going to do that next time. So apparently that's worth the price of admission alone. Uh, but just looking at the original campaign, a lot of the stuff will be the same. You know, artwork, I... I really like the artwork. You know, it looks good. You know, it looks better than uh, the first game, for sure. Uh, camera control, a little awkward. You know, that's kind of uh, irritating. It'd be nice to have a little better of an interface sometimes. You know, just stuff like being able to compare. Well, is this, you sure, know, is that sword yes. better than that sword? You know, that sort of thing. It's like there's no way to, like, bring up the... You, know, you bring that up, but then you can't bring this up. I guess you could look here at your main weapon and kind of compare those two. But, you know, it's just some of the later games that show you, like, this is better, this better damage or whatever. So little things like that kind of annoy. I like the inventory to be more nuanced and have, like, weapons, you know, and so on. I don't know what this wagon is. I guess we'll find that out next time. But anyway, the, the battles are fun. AI is, is probably not as bad as I made it out to be in this game. Oh, here's something fun. Yeah, so you do get these bags of holding. And I love these. You put 100, you got 142 slots <laughs> you can put in this bag. And I think you get this bag as part of your quest, your main quest. So everybody's going to get it. So that kind of takes care of the whole weight and storage issue. Uh... You know, it could be better. The crafting interface, you know, a lot of this stuff just deals with, like, the UI. You know, the crafting system, it's not like it's a bad system. It's just the way that you have to deal with the interface to get it to work could be a lot better. You know, they should, probably should have, a, you know, a whole uh, set of uh, UIs associated with crafting to simplify that. That would be nice just to have, like, a put all your mats in the workbench. So you don't have to lug it all around and keep it sorted. 
Yeah, just little things probably would have been too hard to implement, but my understanding is they kind of run out of time on this game. I just had to get it out. Uh, so maybe that will be settled at some point. But anyway, artwork's fine. The music, I gotta say, is it's good music, but it's very repetitive. And when you're when you're crafting stuff in your keep or the tavern, it's like that same song just plays over and over. It's not a very long song. <laughs> it feels like you're listening to the same like 30 second song over and over. It just drives you nuts. You find it's probably gonna want to turn off the music. Uh, so I'm gonna ding at a point for that, uh, music wise. But otherwise, the music is great. There's just not enough of it, and it repeats too much. Uh, voice acting mostly good. You know, I don't feel like they needed more. It feels like about the right amount. Uh, the cutscenes, fairly well executed, if you like that sort of thing, the cinematics. Uh, again, there is that issue with uh, how would my character possibly know, be privy to this conversation. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, I like the fact that you can go all the way up to level, uh, you know, what is this guy at this point? He's uh, you know, 15, he's, he's level 8 or 17. I think you can go all the way up to 20. And so that's a lot of stuff you can do. You always have something to look forward to, new feats. Uh, new spells for playing a magic user. I love the prestige classes. You know, so all that stuff is great. Uh, so I'm just going to say, all in all, you factor everything in. If I just had to give this a, you know, a score between four, or I, I'll give this on a, like a, f a five out of five, four out of five. I'm going to go four out of five on this, this game as a whole, at least the original campaign. Uh, I liked it. I like that there's, you know, so much room to grow, so many ways to customize. It's, it's interesting. Uh, to explore. I like the changes Obsidian made here. Uh, the main problems, I'm going to say the AI is an issue. Of course, the bugs and glitches are an issue. A lot of that has been patched, but still, I found plenty. <laughs> so I'm not going to go a full 5 out of 5. And I understand what people are saying. Yeah, it's probably not as well crafted story-wise or even though quest-wise as the, the Baldur's Gate series. You know, but okay, you know, at some point you got to stop comparing everything to <laughs> to that it's, almost feels unfair at some point you know it's be like comparing everything like the best uh, led zeppelin album ever released or something you know of course you're going to fall short uh that doesn't mean that your album's not worth listening to same thing here the game's not worth playing absolutely worth playing and so go pick it up on gog i think you really enjoy it and i'll post a link to those uh, mods so you can get those but anyway i'll stop it here hope you enjoyed the video love to hear your thoughts on the game you know, what What characters do you like? Uh, what are your main gripes? That's always fun. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed this and see you next time. And that's all for this week's episode. Or this month's episode. Almost feels like this year's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, my plan is to get through the uh, uh, next the expansion, Mask of the Betrayer, and get that uh, episode out for uh, Matt Chat. Uh, 424 so stay tuned for that uh, as always i want to thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you with a triple helping of thanks thank you thank you thank you for supporting this show making these episodes possible couldn't do it without you uh, if you'd like to support the show just go to that link in the show notes to the uh, patreon site and you can sign up to support the show subscribe uh, you only get charged when new episodes come out you can sign up for a buck. That's all I ask, a buck a show. Uh, or you can go with two bucks, three bucks, even five bucks. You know, whatever it is you feel comfortable with, the show is worth. I really, really appreciate your help. So uh, thank you so much for that. really means a lot to me. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, what else? Uh, well, what about that news from the Mac Cave? It's been a while, so there's quite a bit of news. I'm not going to go through everything that's happened since the uh, last episode. We'll definitely be hitting the high points here. Uh, let's see. Now, this is from Robbie. Home Press releases gaming Skybound Games and Beamdog. Let's see. Uh, Skybound Games and Beamdog reveal console collector's packs of uh, beloved D&D RPGs, which include... Uh, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate Siege of Dragon Spear, Baldur's Gate 2, P uh, Planescape Torment, Icewind Dale, and Neverwinter Nights. Uh, so they basically have the enhanced editions there. Uh, they've packaged it with the uh, couple of items. Let's see what you get. The physical game, of course, you get a pin set, P-I-N. <laughs> 
uh, medallions, uh, parchment maps, parchment, I guess not to be confused with cloth maps, uh, metal dice, those are always cool, and faux leather journals, plus, of course, these gorgeous boxes. I have a couple of these collector's editions. There's the one for uh, uh, Siege of Dragon Spear. So you see, you get a nice big box. Looks great on the shelf. Those medallions are awesome. And these are available for, will be available for the PS4, Xbox One, or the Switch. If you, I'm not really quite sure how this will work out yet, but I guess they're working on that. Uh, so you can play it from the couch. Of course, you could also get the uh, Windows versions. Uh, anyway, those will set you back $199. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, it's $99 each uh, for those packs. Or for $200, bucks, basically, you get the whole uh, kit and caboodle. So I think if you're halfway serious about it, I just spend the uh, 200 and get everything. Uh, that's really going to take you a long time to get through all that. And they, I think they did a really good job with their collector's packs. So I think it'd be money uh, well spent if you're a collector, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, you just get the digital version, right? Uh, also uh, available for pre-order is a game called Gloomhaven. This is uh, $24.99 on Steam. And this is based on a board game uh, called uh, Gloomhaven. Uh, the hugely popular physical board game of the same name. Features 17 playable characters, 47 enemy classes, and a campaign with 95 scenarios. To put it bluntly, it's an absolute behemoth. Digital ad adaptation of the board game mixes tactical RPGs and dungeon crawling. It challenges its challenges, legendary for their unforgiving nature, reward only the most daring players with the sharpest minds. So you get a party of mercenaries carving your way through terrifying dungeons uh, to reap the rewards or die trying. I gotta admit, I'm not familiar with this board game. Yeah, if you know more about it, love to hear of that. Uh, the computer game though looks really interesting, keeping my eye on it. Um, and again, that's $24.99 if you want to pre-order it. And then uh, finally, everybody, of course, has been texting me and messaging me and just shouting really loudly at me about <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3. I don't remember if I mentioned this this last time, but there's been a lot of uh, news about it. It's kind of, uh, seems to be fading a little bit from the uh, from recent headlines. I've been trying to keep an eye on it. Uh, basically, at the Google Stadia Stadia, how would you say that, pre-E3 event got announced that Divinity Original, well, the Larian Studios, who made, of course, Divinity Original Sin 2, I don't know why they singled that one out, but uh, anyway, Larian's working on it, we've got Swin Vinka working on this, uh, and this uh, article I'm posting a link to in the show notes basically sums up, it's PC Gamer uh, Magazine, they're summing up everything we know at the moment, which really and truly isn't a lot, I mean, you got the trailer, you know it's going to have mind flares, uh, but they're being, quote, tight-lipped about this. Uh, so I don't know what we make of that. I guess they don't, maybe they're still trying to make some big decisions about it. Uh, one thing we know that I didn't know before reading this was that it will be definitely be based on the 5th edition uh, d d rule set. So I think that's the, the one that's current, right? <laughs> that's the one I've been playing with my uh, tabletop buddies, 5th edition. Uh, so it will be based on that. You know, some people prefer the older versions, but yeah, it'd probably be fine. I don't see any reason not to uh, be excited. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out is, is it going to be turn-based or real-time with pause or something else? And a lot of people are saying, look, of course it's going to be real-time with pause, it's a Baldur's Gate game, uh, yada yada, but you know, it is Larian and they did uh, sort of really show how turn-based can be done or should be done with uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, I found a straw poll somebody posted on Reddit with the 442 votes, of course, you know, how reliable is this? I don't know. Uh, but that showed a 67% preference for a turn-based game. You know, maybe they'll try like they're doing with, the, what is it, Pillars 2, where they now have uh, both options available. I don't know what will ultimately be settled on. Uh, I, don't tend to, I don't tend to think uh, having both options is a good idea. You know, I would, if I were them, I'd just pick one and try to make it the best possible. So we'll wait and see. You know, I remember talking uh, to Swin way back whenever, I think it's probably been years now when I interviewed him. And I remember him telling me that he really liked making turn-based games all along, but just when he started his uh, studio, the Diablo craze was at its height and no publisher was interested in any kind of turn-based product. Uh, so that's why those early uh, Divinity games were all real-time or Diablo style. Uh, so, you know, maybe if it's up to him, he might be, maybe that's why there's not a lot of details yet. Maybe they're working out some of this uh, 
some of the minutia of that. But uh, I'd like to know what you think. Would you like to see a turn-based game, maybe something like uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, but with the 5th edition rules? Or do you think it's Baldur's Gate, got to be real-time with pause, warts and all? <laughs> you know, hopefully they'll be able to, uh, uh, you know, not have all those warts in there. You know, as you see, even in Neverwinter Nights 2, we see plenty of uh, issues with that real time with pause. Uh, and then a couple of last things. Uh, we got a Matt Chat Hangout coming up again in August. This is, will be with Julia Minamata, designer of the Crimson Diamond. You know, and I mentioned this a few times, but if you like those old uh, Sierra classics, the Laser Shoot Larrys, King's Quest, you know, the, you know, the EGA games, uh, you really want to check this out. It's EGA Text Parser Mystery Adventure Game featuring an amateur geologist and reluctant detective, Nancy Maple. So follow Nancy as she travels north to the fictional ghost town of Crimson, Ontario to investigate the discovery of a massive diamond in the area. And so I saw this game was uh, really, really piqued my curiosity. And then I got in touch with uh, Julia, uh, the designer. She wants to come on, uh, you know, come on the show and talk, talk to us all about it. So I'll be posting the details. We're still uh, finalizing the date on that, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be absolutely fantastic. I mean, just take a look at this game. And then uh, finally, uh, don't forget we are still <laughs> selling copies of the great Dungeons & Desktop 2nd Edition by uh, yours truly and Shane Stacks. And we do have some uh, content coming up for this book. Uh, matter of fact, Shane and I will be doing a, uh, a look at the multiplayer version of Neverwinter Nights 2. We've been planning that, working out the details on that behind the scenes. Uh, so eventually there will be an episode... Uh, on the multiplayer version of that. And we'll be talking about the book, you know, as a, <laughs> in that episode. Uh, but just, if you haven't gotten this yet, go ahead, pick up a copy. Uh, it's on Amazon, of course, pretty much any other uh, book selling site. There's a hardcover version. It's about twice uh, the cost of this uh, paperback version. Uh, either way, though, I think there's also plenty of, uh, you know, digital editions and whatever. Uh, but I think you're really going to like this. And the people are still emailing me saying, is it different than the first edition? I already got the first edition. Do I need the second edition? You know, absolutely you do. I mean, there's a huge, there's a lot of added content here, a lot of uh, corrections that were made, lots of uh, changes. It's really a new book. It's well beyond the, uh, whatever that percent is, it's supposed to be for a second edition. I mean, I think you'll want both copies for sure. And this one, of course, has the uh, the color screenshots. It's such a big issue in the first one. Uh, so anyway, if you haven't got this, go ahead and pick it up. Uh, if you want a signed copy, uh, email me or text me. We'll figure out some way to do that. Uh, but I really want you guys to get this book. I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, if you got a birthday coming up or maybe some time off for summer looking for something to read, hey, you can't go wrong good old Dungeons and Desktops 2nd Edition. All right. Uh, let's wrap it up with a quote then. And I was looking up for quotes about artificial intelligence. And, you know, most of the quotes, uh, you know, most people are very negative about it. You know, as a Stephen Hawking's always saying, it'll be the end. <laughs> it kind of this post-apocalyptic vision of, uh, you know, artificial intelligence. It's almost kind of hard to find uh, positive uh, thoughts about it. But I found this quote, it's kind of funny. You know, it's kind of rare to find funny quotes about AI. But, but here's one from Alan per or Perlis. And he's an American computer scientist and professor, or was. I guess he's still alive. <laughs> Anyways, was at Purdue. Uh, Carnegie Mellon and Yale, best known for his pioneering work in programming languages and the first recipient of the Turing Award. So a guy that knows what he's talking about. So let's say all that to set this quote up. It goes something like this. A year spent in artificial intelligence is enough to make one believe in God. So ponder on that. See you guys next time.
That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.